What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Art of War stream. We are bringing you the Adeptus Mechanicus tier list based on the brand new codex, which I have the pleasure of holding here, although there is green on it. So you can see it uh, kind of <laughs> where, where else would there be green? There's always green. There's always green. <laughs> Quinn's hair is actually blue. People think it's green. It's not. It's, we it have a green blue. screen. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's blue. It's not actually that close to the green color. It's kind of funny. But the camera really likes it. Yeah, I was going to say. So uh, we're going to enjoy that. But this should be super exciting. Um, there is the copy yet that we don't have the full points for mm -hmm. the Minotaurum Field Manual, which usually comes out. We've seen Tyranids, Space Marines get new points. However, those are very closely aligned for the most part with the existing MFM, and I expect the same to happen for Admech. So mm -hmm. if there's any crazy points drops or points increases, we will come back and revisit this, um, and I'll certainly explain my thoughts in the comments, but I expect things to be very similar to what they are right now. Yeah. Normally, so that's why we're doing it and there's a lot of hype about the admec codex because they finally have rules mm -hmm. i know this concept might be foreign to you if you've been playing admec <laughs> for the last couple months but you actually do have rules and synergies now and including several powerful ways to play the army so i'm very excited about that and uh this tier list is going to base each unit ranked off of their best attachment. So I'll talk about how they can fit into different attachments, but I'm mostly going to rank them based on where they fit into their best attachment, mm -hmm. which I'll explain which which is which. Um, so, super excited about this. Um, finally, Admech get quite a bit of love, and they really needed it, in my opinion. The index was actively hurtful. It was garbage. Uh, somehow, a couple heroes out there who just play Admech uh, kept the win rate up besides being absolutely abysmal. But frankly, um, I think if more people played this army, it would have been significantly lower. Um, however, the Codex will, it is a dramatic improvement on this <laughs> army, let me tell you. Um, and uh, I'm gonna be very excited to explore the different ways to play. Um, as I kind of, there was a one game in the war room where Quinn and I played Necrons vs. Admech. I played the Hunter Cohort, he played the Hypercrypt. Um, and then this Wednesday on YouTube, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time coming up, that is going to be uh, Admech vs. Necrons again. Mm -hmm. But the Canoptic Court, uh, which is probably the strongest Necron build. I think so, yeah. And I'm going to be playing the Datasom Conclave, which I think is one of the strongest ways to play Admech. So two armies going head to head. Uh, that's going to be coming up on our YouTube channel, so if you're a fan of this faction, please come back and uh, check out the live game on uh, on Wednesday. All right, without further ado, uh, if you like this type of content, if you like our tier list, if you like any of the analytical stuff that we do focused on competitive 40k, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about us. That all really matters. In addition, leave us a comment below letting us know what you think of the rankings uh, that we go ahead and uh, propose here, and also uh, what you're most excited for in the Admech Codex, because I'm really excited about it, I hope you are too, and I'm excited to hear other people's excitement. So please do comment. If you want more additional content, there's going to be Admech State of the Factions. There's going to be a Faction Fundamental, eventually a Master Class. There's going to be tons more games. Um, we're going to be recording tons and tons of games with the Admech Codex. So if you want to see all that additional content, please sign up for the War Room, theworm.vhx.tv. There's a three-day free trial. If you sign up on the web platform, you get free access to our iOS and Android apps. And uh, there's tons of other content in there for helping you level up your game. Uh, so check it out, three-day free trial and uh, you get to watch tons and tons of stuff. It's really cool. All right, Quentin. All right. You don't play Admech. I don't. But you have. You are probably <clears throat> the single person in this house who has played the most games against Admech. Well, I had a bunch of bad armies. We both did. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it was funny, because like I was the one who played the most games against Sisters, against yep. Death Guard. Like, <laughs> I actually know the rules of the bad armies. Yeah. Uh, and Admech was down there. Mm. So... How do you feel about Admech just going into this tier list? You are my humble servitor here, although you were removed from the Codex as the data sheet. Yes, sadly. <laughs> so my thought broadly is that, like, it seems that a lot of the data sheets are more or less unchanged. Some of them got, you know, a little bit better, but not like any sweeping gigantic changes. Yep. But the big thing is the fact that you actually have detachment rules now. Before, the rad cohort was just, like, flaming <laughs> garbage. Like, the garbage that they were throwing at your opponent to make them take mortals was the rules of the index. <laughs> That's how bad it was. It was so bad that I actively was like, is there a way that I cannot use the detachment rule? No, it, it is in there. You have to use it. Yeah. You can't not pick a detachment. <laughs> which is, uh, now not a problem. Even the Rad Zone core, which is the updated version of it, is, is a lot better. significantly better. Yeah. So there's you a lot more You a lot more mortals and you take a bunch of Battleshock tests. It's like way better. It's mm -hmm. dramatically better. So... Um, Let's go ahead, and if you haven't 
kind of figured out what the rules are in this book because obviously it's only been previewed. There's a two week pre-order for it uh, alongside the Necron Codex. If you don't really kind of know all the different rules, which is totally reasonable, check out the Codex review that we did uh, released on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And there's a full one for the Necron Codex as well. So if you want to hear our thoughts on all the different rules, go check that out. Uh, but as I said, there'll be more on this very soon, including a build a list ad mech this Friday. Uh, and in chat, again, we are using uh, the points we have now in the MFM, just kind of space line. We have no idea what GW is going to do with the points, but that's kind of what we're assuming. Generally, for both of the past Codex releases, the MFM has been very similar. Some minor decreases um, and like sometimes a, a random increase here or there. But I expect Admech to be basically the same. I don't yeah. think they can realistically continue reducing the cost of this army. No, because be so price per model, it is one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive one. Mm -hmm. It's like up there with GSC and stuff mm -hmm. uh, to collect it. Um, so I, I don't think they're going to be, you know, a, a, like a fire sale on the Admech points, although that would be awesome for mm -hmm. me. <laughs> but uh, what I expect is that it'll be roughly similar. So that's why we're basing it off of that. <clears throat> All right. You want to go ahead and get into this? All right, let's dive in here, uh, and we're going to go through them in order. Basically, go through what used to be the HQs, the troops, uh, so on and so forth. We're going through the order in the Codex, um, so that if you uh, come back to this later, when you have the Codex, you'll be able to follow along uh, on the exact data sheets. Okie doke. So, Quinn, you're my bookman, book just man. in case we need to uh, check, anything out. check anything out. So, we're going to start off with uh, Belisarius Call. He Belisarius Call. is the Fabricator General. He is, uh, at least in my heart, he unfortunately did not get a big buff. I was no. hoping that he would be the one to get a big data sheet buff, because effectively, out of all the different characters that have a in your command phase, you pick three, one of three rules, and you get that rule for your army. Usually it's an aura. He has by far the worst ones. Yeah, they're real bad. Uh, they're and real bad. The, it got worse. He used to have a stealth aura. Mm -hmm. It has now been replaced by a benefits of cover aura. Which is useless. You might be saying, like, benefits of cover is very good. However, when you play on, like, US Open Games Workshop format or WTC or any of the more terrain-dense formats, it's enormously easy to get cover. You don't need that in an aura. Uh, stealth is, is much more useful, although there is a detachment to get stealth and other stuff. So how, how many points is he right now? He is 185, 180, something like that. Um, is he I, worth it? Just like a thing that runs around? He, he's just expensive. Um, so he, I have run him multiple times. The reason you would take him is that he's reroll ones to hit aura. Mm -hmm. And that's not bad because this army generally lacks rerolls. Except you're paying the points premium, because if you think about it, instead of running him, I could just grab three more Iron Striders. Wow, you get him game. or three Iron Striders? Well, you get points to spare with the Iron Striders. <laughs> so, wow. the thing is, like, I, I generally I prefer just grabbing more firepower. Or him plus another unit is basically six Cataphron Breachers. And so when you put it in that sense, I don't think his buff is strong enough mm. to justify that points. I'd rather just an extra damage dealer instead. Yeah, I just finished reading Gene Father, and that was about Call, and I wanted him to be good, but I don't think he is. Uh, we haven't done the tiers yet, but it, it's going to look like this. Yeah. Um, but Call... Uh, there's a funny comment in here. Maybe they delete the one in his points, maybe. <laughs> then he would five. definitely be worth it. But... Um, he is just too expensive for what he brings. I really wish... I want him to be, like, an expensive elite, like, leader of this army, but he has to do it with a with some sort of value. And this is the problem with keeping a lot of the index data sheets, is that if it was a poorer data sheet and they didn't get a big buff to the data sheet, mm -hmm. it's... You have to really discount the call to be worth. He needs, like, a 60, 70-point drop for me to be like, all right, maybe I'll start thinking about call. In the same way that, like, Mortarian is really bad but costs, like, no points... Yeah, but at least Mortarian is like this big durable thing. He's relatively fast in the army, oh, and his rule is a, his rule is a lot more impactful than Call. Yeah. But like I said, I think it's better just to have more firepower or more tools than Call. Um, so I honestly think that he is one of the worst data sheets in this book, and there's very little reason to run him. I mean, I think you could run him. He's one eighty five. Yeah, well, one eighty, one eighty five. He's probably going to be somewhere in. There. I. He's not. 
Yeah, I mean, if he's anywhere close to what he currently costs. I, I hope he goes down like 50 over. He is really bad. I keep looking at his data sheet being like, well, you could run him as like a thing that goes out there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like he's relatively like durable, things. but he's slow. And you could run like three transports instead of him. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, he's not bad. three, but <laughs> like two and a half. <laughs> he's, he's he is really quite poor. <sighs> I honestly think he just makes your army worse by making sure you have less stuff. Yeah. No, this, these attack profiles are pretty pitiful. Even if you wanted, like I said, even if you wanted to run all tanks around him, just like a tank spam army, just bring more tanks. Yeah. He just there's, doesn't do there's enough. No, there's no universe where he's not just better than more things. Yeah. With the stealth aura, there was a consideration because stacking stealth with the army rule for minus one AP when you're within mm -hmm. your deployment zone, that's a pretty powerful combo. But now you have the hunter cohort, so a lot of the Skatari stuff will just have mm -hmm. stealth um, if you're running that detachment. And then if you're not running that detachment, now Breachers can't get stealth. Other things can't get stealth that they otherwise were previously. So he, like, he just took a nerf too. Yeah. Um, so hopefully he's dramatically cheaper, but I don't expect that. Yeah. Um, all right. Cool. That's cool. The tech priest. Which makes me so sad. He's the Dominus. coolest model. He's the coolest Admech model. Oh, yeah, by far. All right. The tech priest Dominus. He basically remained the same. He has the 5 of Fino Pain. If he goes in an Electro Priest unit, they get a 4 of Fino Pain, mm -hmm. which is quite strong. And um, if he makes a charge move, um, you know, in the fight phase, if he's engaged in range of a vehicle, he can roll a, f um, a four up and I think do D6 mortals to yep. it. And they're minus one to hit. Minus one to let's go. But yeah, yeah, so it's, he is just a solid character. He has been, I believe, stayed at 75 points, which is probably on the upper end of like where I would want to pay for him mm -hmm. because it's just the unit that he's leading that gets it. But he is a very solid character, whether you throw him in breachers, um, or you put him in Electro Priest unit. Uh, what I previously did with the Rad Cohort was you can give him Stealth, go in a Priest unit, and then the Stealth would be minus one to hit, then you'd have minus one to wound on the Priest. Corpus Gari no longer have that rule, mm -hmm. just Fulgurites do have the minus one to wound, but it's still pretty pricey for that. But you get the four of Fiona Pain out of it too. I don't like hate this guy. No, I think he is one of the better tech priests. I think he is super solid. Generally, you see him uh, run with breachers, mm -hmm. although he does have competition. Uh, so I think he is just a very solid character. I'd like him to go down like five to ten points, uh, frankly, because I think the manipulus is a little bit better. But he, I think he's, he's a very solid character. Yeah, I, mean, I would put him in A tier. Um, and like the tier rankings here... S is going to be, that's just automatic. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much going to appear in every single list, by and large. Uh, a is solid competitive unit. You can plug it into any list, and it'll pretty much perform. B is going to be, this is okay. This is has a role in a particular time and a place, and it can do that role, uh, but it's not spectacular at it. And then C is, this is has niche uses. It's it's going to struggle in a lot of lists, and it's not that particularly good. D is actively hurts your army. Is like there's really little reason to run this unit, uh, and I unfortunately call is down there. <laughs> uh, um, super chat from John Apocalypse. Uh, your most anticipated codex we know is next year. Uh, I believe Tau is on the. Oh yeah, Tau is mine. Tau is on the radar. You're not a Tau player anymore. You, I, I own like eight thousand points of Tau. I haven't touched you, him in forever though. <laughs> I own a Manta. Okay, yeah, that's you, enough points. No, I'll, I'll concede <laughs> that one to you. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so I definitely, I believe Tau is on the roadmap. That's the one that I'm most excited yeah. for. Uh, thanks so much. And would love to, we got a super chat from Amir Hades. Would love to see Admec, Votan, Death Guard, Battle Report at their most underpowered in 10th. We, we did, did that. that. Yeah, we did it. you can give me no watch ignore him. <laughs> you can go back and watch the multiple games of Admec and Death Guard uh, into each other, uh, as well as Votan into Death Guard. We My, played all those matchups. Yeah. Death Guard was the worst army oh, based on our, our games bad. played. My favorite game was the one where I played Death Guard and you played Admech and we lined up 10 inches apart in Napoleonic style and shot each other for five turns and no. nothing died. Well, we shot each other and charged. Like, yeah. my Iron Striders charged into him, Play Bruce Crawlers were charging. It was just like a slap fight. We each ended with like 1,500 points on the table. It was fantastic. Yeah. Good time. I, I honestly envision that that's what they think 10th edition is like. Yeah. Then they were like, somebody else wrote Eldar and GSC in yeah. those crazy books. All right. Getting okay. back to Admech here. Okay, so The engines here. The Engine Seer. This guy got a huge glow up. Yes. Okay, he's around like 40, 45 points. Uh, and what does he do? He goes ahead and gives out when he um, is within three of a vehicle mm -hmm. in your command phase, he can heal it, D3, mm -hmm. yep. which is nice. He's the only tech priest that maintained healing. What? Uh, which is... Uh, That's weird. Yeah. Okay. It used to be that Call could heal anything plus uh, vehicles. Yeah. He could heal like any Imperium unit. 
um, lost that. <laughs> and then all the other tech priests lost their heal, except mm-hmm. for the engine seer. Now, he used to give a four up invuln mm-hmm. to a vehicle model. So the guard targeted. one does that, right? Yeah. Uh, I believe so. Um, but now they changed it to five up feel no pain. It's still only vehicle model, but it means your uh, Scorpius Dune Rider transport mm-hmm. that you send up. Yep. It's even more durable and annoying to deal with. Those Onagers? The Onager Dune Crawler, which is probably the most defensive of the tanks with the mm-hmm. two up, four up. Um, but you could put it on a Scorpius Disintegrator. Mm-hmm. You could put it on the Flyer before it flies away. You could put it on, um, you know, a single Iron Strider in, mm-hmm. in its unit. Uh, you could put it on a Castellan Robot. There's a lot of options to put that. This guy is quite strong. Uh, he's also a lone up when he's nearby the vehicles. Oh, he is, yeah. Um... And most, most importantly, if a vehicle <laughs> dies near him, he gets three extra attacks with his axe. And that's important, because he, he's a killer. <laughs> but yeah. Strength, strength, 682 damage, too. Let's go. Five of Fiona Pain on top of a vehicle that usually has a pretty good base armor save, mm-hmm. potentially minus one to incoming AP if it's within your deployment zone and you're in that uh, doctrine. Mm-hmm. This is, this is a big upgrade. I genuinely think that he... Uh, before, I really didn't run him and didn't value him too highly mm-hmm. because with that combo, your tanks were mostly getting the minus one AP and with cover, they didn't really need a four-up invuln. Yeah. Five of Fino Pain, you always need five of Fino Oh, Pain. Uh, yeah. It's... This guy, I think, is just straight up A tier. He is very strong. Uh, he fits better in a vehicle list, obviously, mm-hmm. because he synergizes with either a transport-heavy style to make the transports harder to deal with, and people already trying to gear up to like wrap transports admeg don't care about that as much because they want more trash thrown at them that they can yeah. kill easily mm-hmm. and they're not disembarking something that's a, a ludicrous damage deal no it's chosen. like 10 rangers or whatever yeah, yeah. with maybe a character to give some rerolls. Mm-hmm. that's fine <laughs> but this guy forces them to have to put a lot of damage which mm-hmm. means then you expose your breachers then you expose your iron striders and you can put enough firepower to potentially kill their damage dealer in mm-hmm. return before yeah, a Dune Rider's probably going to die to some, like, a, one or two anti-tank pieces. Maybe, like, three Eradicators could just kill it. But with five of Fino Pain thrown in there, might not. they might not now, uh, and potential other bonuses. So, I genuinely think he is I, very uh, good. I, I think he might be S-tier. I don't think he's S-tier because I don't think he is mandatory um, in lists. I feel like every hmm. Admiral is going to take one or two of these guys, right? This like, funnily just, enough, the, I... But the thing is, I've written multiple lists where I didn't run him, okay. and that's because my only vehicles were the transports, and I didn't feel like it was enough uh, of a of a boost, mm-hmm. because generally I'm gonna just kind of more things. I'm gonna take more stuff. But he is he is very cheap for what he what he brings. I think if you go heavy on the vehicles, then he's fantastic. I also think the other reason I wouldn't put him S tier is because the hunter cohort mm-hmm. has a five of Fino Pain strat for your dragoons. Okay. Um, and he also, if you take a bunch, they give assassinate. But yeah. Yeah, and he, he's a cheap little lone op, so mm-hmm. he's going to be able to hang back. Uh, but the fact is, is that dragoons are going to be one of the most popular vehicles from this book, mm-hmm. and if they're running their best attachment, they're going to have a five of Fino Pain anyway. So he's really buffing, you know, a battle line tank the or Andrew, the transport, yeah. uh, which isn't a hundred percent mandatory. It is nice, but then you all of a sudden the transport needs to be within three of him, and also you're spending. Uh, you know, probably like 80 or so points on the transport, plus whatever, 40, 45 for him, 50. And that's going to get you, that's going to start getting pricey. Yeah, that's fair. I think it's worth it for the 5 of Fino Pain, but I don't think it's mandatory. I yeah, think it's... I, I just, 5 of Fino Pain can skew the math so much. Because like a lot of times someone is like, okay, well this unit has enough to kill Rhino equivalent vehicle. Right, and the engines here can really like break that math. I think he's, I think he's better than Dominus. I think he's going to be. I think he's top of A tier. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The Manipulus. This guy is fantastic. Uh, He was one of the big beneficiaries of the Minotaur Field Manual that got released in September Mm -hmm. uh, because he went down like 15 points. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I expect him to stay one of the cheaper HQs. And he gives you lethal hits uh, for the unit that he's leading. And once per battle, uh, at the start of any phase, you can pop a four-up influence. So that's shooting or combat. So you get just lethal hits all the time, which is a fantastic rule. Admech want help punching up. And then also you get an extra defensive buff from him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you used to have the Omnipulus, uh, who had the Omni Sterilizer upgrade and the uh, Transonic Cannon as Flamer, mm-hmm. and do a ton of you know potential dev wounds with anti-infantry 2+, plus, anti-monster 4+. Plus. That 
uh, enhancements still exist, but it lost the plus three attack. So it's way less consistent, and it's yeah. only obviously in the red cohort, red zone cohort or core. Mm -hmm. So that version of him was just S tier. It was automatic. However, I think if you were running any amount of breachers, which you're going to in Data Psalm Conclave and probably most other detachments, he is the best character to join. Oh, he makes breachers way better. Dramatically better. The lethal hits really helps, especially against non-vehicle units, to punch up. His gun is also not terrible by itself. It's the a solid enough gun. Pretty good. And then that 4-up invuln is nice. Now, in the Data Psalm, you can get the 4-up invuln anyway, but that just means that you don't you have, have to spend CP. And you can have multiple units. And stuff. Exactly. Yeah. You can pop the ones per game in your shooting phase. If they then make a charge move, then you can pop the strat. Mm -hmm. um, or I think if you have two breachers and they both get shot. Make sure the Data Psalm... Or you do the reverse. Make sure yeah. it's not shooting only. Data Psalm Conclave. Mm. You just passed it. Okay. It's that strat. Okay. Um, in your shooting phase only. Okay, so you yeah. would use this strat in the shooting phase, do the free one in combat. Okay. Okay. I think he's S tier. I oh, think yeah, because of the power of the Breacher data sheet, which we will get to, he is the first guy that you typically add in. Now, the Dominus 5 of Fiona Pain, very solid. Mm -hmm. However, it, their armor save just isn't great, and if you're not hanging them back and sitting in the minus one AP... They're just going to put so much damage on you, where a 4-up invuln really helps them out dramatically. Yeah. Bre breachers are not hard to kill, if, the, especially if they're like pushing into the center. Exactly. Um, so, And you're usually going for that because they lost 6-inch range, and they want to get within half range for those extra shots. Yeah. And I think the Manipulus just helps be able to play them more aggressively. He doesn't still increase their range, does he? He used to do that. No, yeah. that, that was a uh, ninth edition. <clears throat> yeah. But I think he is the best character to join with Breachers. Not only is he cheaper, but he gives you a defensive and an offensive buff, and I'm a big fan of that. Plus, I, I've actually come um, a long way towards really liking characters that can do something by themselves. And having a gun that is a relevant gun, I quite like on a character. Yeah, it, it's it's fine. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the one-shot gun? Yeah, the Transonic Cannon. And he also, the oh, you're talking about also, the Flamer. Well, they're both okay. Right? Yeah. Like, he has both, right? You can choose one of them. You choose okay. one. Um, I, I mean, wish he had both. <laughs> yeah, he had both would be cool. I still like the Rag Magnum Rail Lance. Just being able to like shoot and kill a Terminator or take the last couple of wounds off a thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's typically what I take nowadays if I'm not running the... Uh, the Omnibulus? Uh, the Rad Zone co Core. Yeah. All right. So I think he's fantastic. Yeah. I think he's the best of the, the characters, personally. Yeah. Okay. Well, then we've got the Techno Archaeologist. Mm -hmm. This guy is a very interesting tech piece. Mm -hmm. Now... A lot of armies would kill for this type of model. Oh, yeah. Because he has one of the strongest rules that you can have, um, especially in the modern meta. Yeah, I think he's very good, but very meta-dependent. Very meta-dependent. And that's because he is a 12-inch aura of your opponent can't come in from reserves. Yeah. So there's several armies in the game, Chaos Demons, Grey Knights, um, the Inceptors, yep. that can come 3.1 away. GSC. Um, and he's just like, no, you cannot. On top of that, he is... Um, very good at just holding down a flank. If mm -hmm. your opponent doesn't have indirect fire, not too many armies do, he can just sit in a corner of the board and just block that whole thing out. Your opponent goes for teleport homers, they're just not getting in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can very easily screen that out. In addition, if he is leading a unit, they get plus one OC. Which is really nice. So Electro Priest can go to OC2, your basic troops, your Skatari can go up to OC3. All of that, very interesting. Um, and he has been sitting around 45 points. I expect him to stay around there. Mm -hmm. It's a solid price for him. Oh, yeah, um, frankly. So I think he he's a very, very good unit. I typically like running one, especially with the new meta with new marine builds, mm -hmm. having so many inceptors. You don't want those guys getting into your lines behind and, you know, popping off with plasma, your your um, cat from breachers. Mm -hmm. You don't want any of that. Uh, you also don't want them. The, the annoying thing they can do is they could rapid ingress onto an objective that you didn't point enough guns at because you're trying to keep your firepower safe. But having the techno archaeologist, you can just be like, nope, you can't come to within 12 inches of this objective. You can't play off, pull off any of those plays. So I really value him quite highly uh, because of that. And I think he's he's a very good choice. So I, I think he's probably in a tier. But like, would he be good if we weren't in the 3-inch deep strike meta we are right now? Uh, then I think if we, if the meta wasn't as heavy on those type of He'd be like plays, there, yeah. Then he's just a solid unit. Yeah, I think he's just very, um, he's very meta-dependent. He's one of the units that will go up and down a lot, not depending on him, but based on what is good. Yep. Like, right now, i take him just for Inceptors, because they're everywhere. But, like, if Inceptors get nerfed or whatever in the next balance update, then I think he goes down the tier. Probably. Yeah. 
Um, so if you don't play in a meta with uh, Inceptors or anything that comes 3.1 away, you don't need him. Yeah. But he is cool. But if you're in a tournament, you probably will, and then he is pretty good. But a tournament style admic list right now, I think he is he's quite strong. Also, you have the Knopf, the uh, the Hypercrypt. Oh for yeah. <laughs> you don't want 20 warriors uh, appearing 3.1 away from you. <laughs> well, no, it's the model of then 20 warriors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he stops all of that. <laughs> Okay. For the low, low price. Stilts, man! Okay, so, the Sidonian Scatros. Can you put him in B tier because he will break his own legs? He's going to break his own <laughs> legs. You're going to break him, your opponent's going to break him. That model is, like, very tall and mounted on, like, a millimeter of plastic. It's not It's not ideal. Honestly, whoever <laughs> sent that design to, like, as soon as, if I was on the rules team and they sent me a picture of this and was like, create rules for this, I'd be like, I refuse. I, re I straight up refuse. <laughs> Go back to the drawing board. You have done a silly. Apparently, he just stands there. Like, he just points a sniper at a yeah, spot he... and, like, waits for someone to walk in front of him. <laughs> He's like a sentry. Yeah, just... But where, where the mechanic is, let's just have an automated thing. Well, uh, what do you do? Just have a turret. Uh, <laughs> someone sent me a comment. I think this is when you're a really bad Skitari. Yeah. They, they mount you in the Sedona <laughs> Scatro suit. Someone sent me a, um, a, a photo of, it was like a comic of like all the Skitari like in a line going to the mess hall and the Scatro just like outside because we couldn't get it. Well, he needs to tall. guard the mess hall. Somebody <laughs> needs to and this is the perfect tool to do it. <laughs> <laughs> You just lock them up in a in a in a circus suit. Okay, so I mean, he's got one shot of a gun. Yeah, you pick one of two guns, both of which are one shot. Mm -hmm. One is better against infantry because you get a reroll wound against infantry. The the radium Giselle version. Mm -hmm. The other one, the transranic arquebus version, is better into uh, monsters and vehicles because yeah. you get a reroll against it. Hits on threes, they're heavy, so he can just get plus one to hit and hit yeah. on twos. He is decidedly mediocre if he hits the target which he probably will but might not then uh you all you get a um your opponent takes a battle shock test mm -hmm. so in the red zone core where you want to proc as he's many pretty good there he's pretty solid there he also combos very nicely with the infiltrator data mm -hmm. sheet which we will get to but they have a much improved um like set of rules mm -hmm. But the the one that they synergize with is is a six inch aura of minus one to battle shock and leadership tests, mm -hmm. or if the infiltrators are within six of battle line, which is Skitari troops, then it's minus two. Mm -hmm. So now you can proc. You go ahead. You put your infiltrators within six inches of your troops and within six of the enemy unit. Say like a Redemptor dreadnought. You fire the Scatros. He hits the Redemptor, and then uh, now it fails its battle shock at minus two and can't use armor of contempt. That's the situation where this is valuable. Now he's a lone op, so he can just sit in the open. In the Skitari Hunter cohort, he can be redeployed out into the open and just stand there, get the plus one to hit, and uh, just force some battle shock tests with infiltrators. So that's the synergy with him. I wish he did something more for the army, frankly. I think he's going to be probably relatively cheap as the other Admech characters are, so yeah, he will I mean, probably most, just be a cheap most lone Most lone ops are in the kind of like 50 to 70 point range, so probably somewhere in there. Yep. I don't I, expect him to be different. I actually that. quite like this guy. No, I'm not going to lie, I kind of like him. He can go back into reserve in the Contra cohort as well. Yeah. Come down and get angles or go into a corner and do an action. Mm -hmm. So that there is synergy there. I wish his rule was a little stronger mm -hmm. um, by itself. And, or he was a better damage dealer. Like, maybe yeah. his sniper is two shots instead of the one. You know, a anything little could have really helped him so be I, more I interesting damage. So I think my shoot. biggest problem with the sniper is the fact that every... Off the top of my head, I can name two relevant characters that are three wounds. It's the Spirit Seer and the Skatari Marshal. Almost everyone else has four wounds. He has four wounds. No, 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 no. I'm yeah. saying... But, but his gun is damaged. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you, you, it takes two shots to kill... Insert relevant character here. Yep. If he was four damage and you could like shoot and kill like a space marine character, it'd be cool. But like yeah. his damage is pretty minimal. You're basically taking him for <clears throat> lone op and then a battle shock test. I actually think he's probably worth it for that. If he falls on the lower end of that point spectrum, if he's closer to like fifty or sixty, probably worth it. If he's up there in like the 70, 80, he's definitely not. That's kind of my opinion. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I think he synergizes best with the Rad Zone cohort because mm. you want to pop as many battle shocks as possible just so that your opponent's army is struggling to have any sort of OC in the center of the board. <laughs> uh, he helps there. Um, and this is probably not a unit that you will spam, 
But you could run two of them and just have both angles kind of shut down. Yeah, I mean, I think also you can just shoot and make the same unit take a bunch of battle talk tests. Like, your opponent's got a really good defensive stratagem or something. That's where he's valuable. It's yeah. Specifically, like, an armor of contempt where Admech yeah. can struggle, because Admech don't have a lot of ignores cover or plus AP, mm -hmm. although they do have more of it now. Um, so, in that situation, it is nice to be able to say, all right, at a minus two battle shock, and that's where you need another mm -hmm. unit to really help make him more powerful, yeah. uh, which is annoying. I think it's kind of fun. I, I think he's in B tier. He is probably just on having a loan op, yeah. um, which Admech do have two loan op. The Engine Seer and Call go both get loan op, mm -hmm. but, but he's only, a real loan op. only where they're near stuff, so yeah. he can out operate independently. He is probably solid enough in the Rad Cohort. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll see one of him thrown into some of the other detachments. But I, I quite like having one loan op in my list, just to be able to hold a point in the open and not I don't lose any models. Yep. He's also a great screen, because he's probably going to be pretty cheap. You just run out there and be like, woo, he moves eight. Still smacks. Yeah. Um, so, he, he's okay. I really wish he was a little more interesting, but he's mm -hmm. okay. My biggest problem with Still Spin is the fact that I'm going to take him to one event and he will break in my case on the way there. <laughs> Somebody's pointing out, if the Omni Sterilizer, the new version of it, whatever it's called, mm -hmm. um, still had the plus three attacks, that would be straight up automatic on him. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, it does not get plus three attacks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the Skatari Marshal. Oh, I like this guy a lot. So what does he do? First of all, he is, he's been the cheapest character. He went down, he's like 35 points right now. I expect him to stay pretty similar. He's three wounds. So if you're playing the Admech Mirror, you want to have the Skatroses to shoot the Marshals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they're not going to be behind terrain because his gun does nothing. What one shot, strength six, AP one, damage one. It is devastating wound seeks. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not good. No. What you take him for is when he joins the Skatari unit, they can get full rerolls to hit. That which seems pretty good. is quite solid because they usually are just going to hit on fours, but now full rerolls, that's a nice improvement on potential damage. The real combo here is the uh, Scorpius Dune Rider transport now has the fire support rule, which lets it, if the transport hits a target, if you disembark that turn and shoot at that same target, you'll get reroll wounds. So now you can get full rerolls to hit, full rerolls to wound. Now, the Skatari weapons, the plasma is okay, the arc rifle is okay, the arquebus is okay, but the basic weapons no longer do insane amounts of damage like they did in 9th edition. Mm -hmm. So you're punching up with a unit that still struggles to do damage, yeah. frankly. And in the game I played against Quinn, I did bring this, mm -hmm. and it did okay. Uh, you killed my Nightbringer. <laughs> I did wreck the Nightbringer, but he is a unique case of just four up I also save. failed every save. So. You did fail a lot of saves. Yeah. So <laughs> your opponents <laughs> failed saves. But the thing is, is in the uh, Skatari mm -hmm. um, Hunter cohort, there is the Battle Sphere Uplink, mm -hmm. which is an upgrade you can throw on the Marshal for shoot and scoot. So you disembark. You can uh, go ahead and uh, advance if you really need to. But effectively, you want to pop out, shoot something, full reels to hit, full reels to wounds, the transport shoots as well, and then you get back in. Yeah. And re-embark because it's a different phase. And you can kind of keep a 10-man pretty safe uh, for the meanwhile. Mm -hmm. That's that's a pretty cool little combo. Uh, that's obviously specific to the Hunter cohort, but it's quite solid. Now, uh, the other thing we want to point out about the Marshal is he has a second rule, which is that if you use... A strat, you can use it again on his unit. Even, so even if you use the strat already, you can use it on his unit. That is pretty useful. Now, with the up, update to the uh, kind of um, the balance update that mm -hmm. happened in September, that stuff only works on battle tactic strats. And the detachment where you really want to take him, which is the hunter cohort, because he accesses all the different enhancements and they're all mm -hmm. um, pretty much good. <clears throat> is all their strats are strategic ploy. Now, if you want to just confirm that for me, well, but see, I'm pretty you can, sure You can all, go to ground and get a six of pinball on your rangers. All six strats, I believe, are strategic ploy, which is... I This this was definitely written before that. It has to be. Yep, all strategic ploys. Yeah, all six of them are strategic ploys. So you, in the detachment where you really want to run the marshal, he can't actually use his second part of his data sheet ability. So maybe they'll come back and fix that. But... Um, for now, he is really just full rerolls to hit. Now, full rerolls to hit, full rerolls to wound with the transport fire support rule. That's a pretty solid package. I still, I used it multiple times and found that it still just doesn't do that much damage because the basic guns are pretty terrible. So I don't know if it's worth the points investment personally. 
in the Skatari uh, Hunter cohort where you can get the Battlesphere uplink or the other enhancements that make the Marshal worthwhile taking, mm -hmm. then it's worth it. Outside of that, I'm skeptical on these units doing enough. How many points is he right now? 35, I believe. I think if he doesn't go Zub, you have no. to take him. He's, a pretty, he's so cheap. I think in the Hunter cohort, he is absolutely uh, pretty much... Honestly, yeah. in the Hunter cohort, he's, he's probably S tier. He's S tier. Yeah. But I think overall, he's he is... Probably more down there. Yeah. He, because you can get the real wounds on the transport, you do do some amount of damage. You can pick up eat Chaff very easily with this unit without yeah, having to You kill stuff like Eldar Guardians really quickly. Yeah. I, I'd never even seen that unit on the table. What are you talking about? <laughs> Eldar Spiders pretty good. Eldar Guardians. Eldar Guardians. <laughs> what kind of Elder list are you talking about? I don't want to play Guardians. <laughs> I do. I know. You should be able to, but uh, yeah. every other unit is better. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> okay. So I think he's probably here because one of those units is not a bad thing to have. No. Just to clear chaff when needed. But as soon as you put the Hunter Cohort enhancements, I think he's just automatic, mm -hmm. at least having one of them in the Hunter Cohort. Yeah. I've written most lists with having like two in the Hunter cohort. Mm -hmm. All right. Skitari Rangers. Like just the synopsis here. It's actually pretty nice that a lot of the characters are useful. And yeah, I look at that. We ranked Part of the reason is they're super cheap. Five or eight tier above. Yeah. Yeah. Is the, the fact is that they're really cheap and they do help upgrade your units. I mean, and characters Admech are... need that. Characters are always just like a like, is this is the points worth the buffs they provide? And the if you make the points really low... Even if the buffs aren't awesome. So still good. this guy should have been a Sakaran Princeps Alpha. I will just say that. Because this is a uh, an addition where you want characters to lead your units. And Sakarans and Rust Stalkers needed more love. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I, so Infiltrators got a good amount of love, but Rust Stalkers needed some more. And the alpha, just having an alpha there would have really helped oh, those that units. Really cool. Oh, like instead of the Scatros? So, yeah, instead so of like, the Scatros, or in addition, because Necron's got three models, mm -hmm. they, come on, Games Workshop, where's my Sakaran alpha? I just want to note that. You don't love Stealth Man? No, I don't. I, I despise him. <laughs> he is an eyesore. He, he's what? like the windmills in the Netherlands. Like, <laughs> it has an effective purpose, supposedly, yeah. but it is a complete eyesore. Watch, they're going to come out and this catch is going to be like 15 points, and he's going to have to run three to every tournament. If it's four, no, I, I don't want to. I don't want to build uh, two more of them. <laughs> okay. But if, if it is that cheap, I will get them. Yeah. <laughs> I will painstakingly do it, just like I did it for the flyers. <laughs> How many flyers do you own? Uh, I own all six of them. Oh, wow. Maybe more. I don't think I don't think about them anymore. Okay. <laughs> Skatari Rangers. <laughs> all right, so Skatari Rangers. Their rule is they um, stick objectives. Oh, they also scout six. They also have a scout move. They are the battle line, and battle line interacts with a lot of the different rules in this book. Or not a lot of them, but like a, a significant number and some of the good runs, specifically the Breacher data sheet. Mm-hmm. The Infiltrator data sheet also really likes them. A lot of the random uh, kind of Skatari stuff wants to have Battle Line nearby. Mm -hmm. So, useful for that. Sticky objectives. I just like always having one unit of these. Sticky's my home objective immediately. Now, Admech usually have enough stuff that they don't... They can screen out their backfield. Yeah. But when you sticky that, you go sticky the side objective. Mm -hmm. Now your opponent is real... Now you can keep using your troops to contest objectives in the middle mm -hmm. and don't have to worry about holding them back on an objective as much. They're also like pretty cheap OC2 bodies, which is really useful. Yep. So. They were 125 points when the index released, which was ludicrous. They went down to 90. 90 is still on the high side for them, and they'll probably stay around that. Mm -hmm. But I would frankly prefer if they went down a little bit more yeah. um, because I, they, their weapons just do nothing. They, mm -hmm. they literally do nothing. Uh, it's unfortunate that they're one of the few ways you can get Ignore's Cover with the Omni Specs mm -hmm. for a weapon that just isn't that great. Now, the Hunter Cohort can make them better. You can either you can access a plus one AP against a particular target, which is nice. And once you add full reels to hit, full reels to wound, that starts helping them punch up a bit with Ignore's Cover. But it's it's a bit, it's a two CP investment, and you're not always going to want to use that over some of the other strats. Yeah. So um, there are ways to punch up with them, but I frankly think that. They fill the role that they do, but they don't really do it spectacularly. I think they're B tier. I mean, you're gonna see them in every list, though, right? No, you don't. Some, really? Most most of the time, you actually just see Vanguard. Okay. I'm I, I'm one of the few guys that just always runs one because I like the sticky objectives. But I like I said, like it's not it's not that necessary. Okay. Uh, now Scout is cool. 
Except if you're running the Hunter cohort, you can get Infiltrator Scout with an enhancement, which you're okay. going to oh, do. That is, that is... So now you just do it with Vanguard. Yeah. And then the other reason is Infiltrator's got a nice glow up, and you'll see them more often, and they have Infiltrate. So it's not as necessary to really get that, frankly. Okay, I could see, I could see B tier. I will I will acquiesce. Uh, one of the cool things you can do is you can eat, add Curia Draxus. And on a two-up, they can't be targeted unless your opponent's within 18 if you run them in, like, a data Somme conclave. Mm -hmm. But if you run them in the Hunter cohort, you go on CP, make them a up anyways. Off. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Vanguard. So, okay. Vanguard are automatic. So why do I prize them so much more highly than the Rangers for... Mm -hmm. Even though their points difference right now is only 10 points difference, and it's probably going to remain something like that. Mm -hmm. Why do I prize them so highly? Well, they are minus one OC to non-vehicles within three inches. And so when they go to contest an objective, they can contest it very easily against pretty much anything. Even other OC2 bodies, oh, yeah, they dominate they just, them. Yeah, They are an amazing contest tool. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're fantastic um, at being able to do exactly what Admech needs, which is a bunch of bodies to move block or to like wrap a transport or something. And to make sure that your opponent isn't getting primary. They do that job supremely well. And for that reason, I think they are the number one choice for basic battle line. They're also pretty good at killing infantry with the three shots and infantry. Pretty good. They're okay. <laughs> They're good at killing gargoyles in the open. Yeah, if, if, you, if you pop the buffs on them and have the marshal, like they, mm -hmm. will, they will murder a cheap unit. Because yeah. they have good volume of fire. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they are really there to make sure that you can easily dominate the primary. And yes. they do that supremely well. In the Hunter cohort, they can get stealth and um, can access loan op or go back into reserve. They can access the, like I said, infiltrate scout, which is super good. Um, so they are fantastic in the Hunter cohort, but you're going to run them in every single detachment in my mind. Well, I mean, plus you also um, are battle line and that interacts with a lot of the rules of the Codex. Yep. Uh, Cataphron Breachers being number one, but like I said, mm -hmm. this current Infiltrators really like having a battle line nearby as well. They are the bread and butter of your, I'm going to try and win primary in this battle. They are a huge part of that. Plus they have fancy weapons. They, they do have really cool looking weapons. Yeah. Um, that, that was the unfortunate part. Is like in 9th edition, the, wep the uniqueness of the Admech weapons and how dangerous they are. It was really cool was really well done. Now they're like boulders. And then, yeah, now they're just like basic random stuff. Yeah. It doesn't really have the personality that it that it did, uh, which is... A lot of the index is lost here. Yeah. I really miss like the rending on Shuriken because it was like a really cool, unique Eldar thing and now they're just like AP1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Next data sheet is just going to go all the way up here. Uh, Cataphron Breachers. You know them. You love them. They're the Cataphron Breacher. It is still by far the single best damage dealing unit consistency it's like the only damage dealing unit like other things do damage by committee they just can do damage mm -hmm. the, the one activation one unit shoots at one unit i can expect that other unit to die mm -hmm. that is what this unit brings to admech um and it got some significant so the um rad cohort did give it some good rules like i said you could access uh, potentially stealth with an enhancement on there uh you can still do that you could access um the Omni Sterilizer guy being inside and really ramping up the damage, especially against like elite infantry units. Mm -hmm. You can still do it to a lesser extent, but they had a, a uh, if they get shot at, they could shoot back strat. Now that strat is uh, completely changed and doesn't exist anymore. And that was part of their damage was you shoot in your, you come out, you shoot, your opponent steps out, you overwatch because mm -hmm. you've got four rerolls to hit. And lethal hits. And lethal on sixes. And then your opponent shoots at you, you pop the four up in vuln, they kill some amount of the models, but not the whole unit, you shoot back, and you get three activations out of the unit. Mm -hmm. You know, That combo doesn't exist anymore. However, the Datasom Conclave does ramp up one of the weaknesses of this unit, which is that specifically against Armor of Contempt 2-up save, mm -hmm. uh, so something like a Land Raider, or a, Rede a Re Redemptor Dreadnought, or you know Terminators in cover, they, they would be able to say, I have cover, so your AP2 goes to AP1, and then Armor of Contempt, your so AP2 now is now AP0, saves. and they get two up saves. Mm -hmm. That was a problem mm -hmm. for this unit. That is not completely solved, but in the Data Sum Conclave, if you're within half range, you can get plus one AP. You want anyone else help solve that? Sidonian Skechers. Sidonians, it battle shocking. <laughs> battle shocking. Uh, and there are, there are other ways to do it. So that is a huge boon 
for uh, the breachers being able to reach it. Now they lost six inches of range. It means you have to get within 15 instead of 18 for half range. It's still not the end of the world. Um, they kept Doctrinas and all that important stuff. So I still think they are fantastic in the Conclave. You can throw Fight First on the unit so that if your opponent wants to charge them, they'll Fight First and hammer them out. You could even go against uh, you know a more combat heavy army, plus one strength, plus one attacks, and they really do punch quite hard in addition to shooting hard. So this is a fantastic unit. Often you throw the Manipulus in here for lethal hits and for the once per game 4-up In the um, In the Conclave, you can just give them a 4-up invuln in shooting as needed, so you can save the 4-up invuln from the Manipulus for the combat. Mm -hmm. This is the... It, they started at 300 points. They went down to 290. They'll probably be in that range. They are not very... They're not cheap for what you get uh, compared to other damage dealers in the game. But they are the one activation that can come in and just be like, I will do a lot of damage to this target. And you need that. And Admech typically needs this. You can play the stuff approach, but the stuff approach, if you go second and your opponent also has a lot of stuff, can underperform. Um, you know, you're if you're not able to do enough damage against certain stat check armies, they will just run through you. And Admech isn't doesn't have like impossible to beat defenses. No. Um, they will get through you mm -hmm. and probably quick enough. So you need some amount to be like, all right, I can at least kill two of their damage dealers, and that will mean the rest of my stuff will survive long enough to score me the points. Mm -hmm. So I think Breachers are a huge part of that. I think they can fit into pretty much any detachment here. They don't benefit from the Skatari Hunter cohort, but they're just a good data sheet by themselves, uh, with if you bring Battle Line alongside, which you are. So I still think they are the single strongest data sheet in this book. I think it's like not particularly close. So significant they, margin. Like, the rest of the army is, like, fancy garbage. Cataphrons are actually pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like I said, their defense isn't spectacular, but you can easily run two units in most lists and still have plenty of stuff elsewhere. And f those two units will do a lot of heavy lifting for when you need it. Mm -hmm. So I think they're fantastic. Um, and in the Data Song Conclave, that's probably their best detachment, although they can fit right back into the Rad Zone uh, core. They can go into the Hunter Cohort and just be a damage piece that supports all the mission play that you can do. Um, and they can go in the other ones if you want to. The Exploratory, they can get reroll once to wound, um, which is certainly nice. Um, but they're, they're fantastic. No. Yes, yes, I, I know. I know people are like, Breachers, Breachers, Breachers. They are still just the best damage dealer. And there's no way around that. Speaking of not a damage dealer, Cataphron Destroyers. These things are garbage. I don't think they're that bad. They're garbage. They're, okay, I well, will not hear any different. How many points are they right now? They are 120 for three, I believe, and 240 for the full six. That's damage. like not that awful. All right, go ahead and read their profile. Okay, so you get either, you get a Flamer or a Foster Blaster, which is whatever, and you get the Heavy Grav Cannon or the Plasma Culvern, which is either 30-inch range, anti-vehicle 2+, plus, strength 6, AP 1, damage 2, or you get four shots at 832. But you get, like, the extra AP if you're shooting us in the deployment zone, you sit in your deployment zone, or you get the extra... I don't you you the... sit in the deployment zone and not see your opponent because terrain exists. But I... Well, look at the look at the amount of rerolls that are here. Yes. And look at the complete lack of any sort of buffs over here. Okay, but the, like you, they hit on five in Overwatch. Like that's not nothing. <laughs> like I okay, they're they're not great, but they're not that bad. I think these are an okay unit. What universe are you running them over, spending the extra forty or so points on uh, Cataphron? Well, breaches? you already have your eighteen preachers, So what do you? <laughs> as the well, know. as the next like unit maybe down. maybe if you need to make a list fit like like. It's a bunch of, like, plasma shots. Like, that's not nothing. You just go, like... Then you overheat and kill the bases? Yeah, you kill, like, one guy. <laughs> I think it's fine. I think, I think they're okay. They will never see play because they are dramatically inconsistent and their durability is also not good. So you still have to put a character inside them. So they're still going to cost around the same as the Breachers. Well, couldn't you just run, like, six of them by themselves? You could, but, like, what are they going to kill? Uh, some space braids. This army doesn't need help killing space brains. They need help killing big stuff. Well, then you take the grav cannons. <laughs> <laughs> they better be a vehicle then. Yeah, it's easy. It's the, not a vehicle in the better right If now. they had the same data sheet rule as the breachers, yeah. then I would agree that they are, are, are good enough to mm -hmm. run. But because they're so inconsistent, Admech doesn't need more inconsistent damage. Well, they run. hit on fours. Yeah, did you not see that? No, I they hit on threes. They can hit on threes if they remain stationary and get the heavy roll, which means yeah. your opponent is just standing there. It is possible, 
but that means they've been sitting out in the open and your opponent didn't kill them, which yeah. they died. Well, you're playing against Death Guard, obviously, and they just walk it out. Yeah. No, they're not. They're, they're, I... They hit on fours with no rerolls. I think they're, like, C tier. You could run call and spend almost as much as the unit to get reroll ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, put them in C tier. I think they're better than D tier. They are not entirely useless, because as you said, they have a gun that yeah. can do damage, theoretically, but they are not very good. They, they really should have the same data sheet rule as the Breachers, mm -hmm. and then there would be a real decision point between them. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there is none. There is Breachers, and there's everything else. Wait, what's better mathematically? Full rerolls to hit or hitting on fives, if you're creating Overwatch? Because it might actually just... Full rerolls lethal is way better. It has to be. Oh, wow. Hmm. Okay, cool. It really <laughs> has to be. Yeah, I, I think it actually is better. <laughs> So if someone in chat wants to do the math for me, I'm too mathematically incompetent to know. What's better, if you're if hitting on sixes full rerolls or hitting on fives in Overwatch? Which which with where which one? Is you better? can in the Explorator if you're on the acquisition objective marker and being led <laughs> by the character with the enhancement get the plus one to hit. So easy. You can you can definitely do it that way, uh, but I would just do that on a different unit. <laughs> 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 they, they can theoretically do damage basically applies to the whole army i mean it applies to most of the army yeah. as admec is uh damaged by committee except for breachers uh which is why if you don't run breachers your army can just do nothing which has happened plenty of times oh yeah it can just be like all right i guess i didn't roll any hits and or i didn't <clears> roll enough <throat> and awesome <laughs> all right um Corpuscari Electro Priest. Okay, talk about a data sheet that is dramatically improved. It used to be that they were just, if the character was leading them, minus one to wound. Mm -hmm. Fulgurites are the ones that have that now. Corpuscari lost it. Instead, Corpuscari gains if they hit a non vehicle? Uh, non monster, non vehicle. A non monster, non vehicle unit. So just have to hit them. Mm -hmm. Plenty of shots to hit with. And they hit on threes. They get um, minus two to move, advance, and charge rolls. That is a fantastic rule. Um, that is really good. That is very good. You can throw them in transports, pop them out, and uh, hit your opponent's infantry or you know beast units, whatever, and dramatically slow them down from getting where they need to. Mm -hmm. So fantastic on that front. In the Datasom Conclave, they can get plus one attack and strength, which brings them, I believe, strength... Strength six? Six. AP zero damage one, with strength it's two. Yeah, and uh, it'll they'll go from two attack... Uh, Three attacks to four. Yeah, four attacks in combat, hitting on fours. That actually is a lot. That's that's not bad. Yeah. On top of that, uh, they are, um, if they you go for the shooting buff, plus one AP in half range. Now, they don't ignore cover, but still, if you're just shooting at a chaff unit that's in the mid out on an objective in the open, they will just murder it. Oh, absolutely. So, I really like these guys uh, a lot. I already liked them previously and had been running them because... They're also, like, kind of annoying to kill because they're five up, five up. Yep. I played a game against them pretty recently, against my friend who was, like, trying out the new rules for the Codex, um, and he ran a whole bunch of these things at me, and I, like, shot them, and he was like, whoops, I rolled a bunch of fives, whoops, I rolled more fives, and I was like, oh, I killed two? And he was like, yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> and, like, if you put the Dominus in here, you can get the, the uh, four of Fino Pain. I don't think it's worth it for... No, uh, not one on one models. Exactly, but it's something that you could think about uh, doing. Now, the other thing I'd mention is in the Datasom Conclave, there's a stratagem, mm -hmm. which is... Um, you go ahead and send out one of your cult mech units, mm -hmm. and every enemy unit within six of it, um, on a four up, or sorry, on a five up, takes D3 mortals. Mm -hmm. so it's like an AOE mortal thing, it's relatively random. But if you do it on Corp or on Electro Priest, whether Fulbrights or Corpus Gari, mm -hmm. you get plus one to that roll. So on a four up, you do D3 mortals. And you can That's just really string these bad. guys out. Yeah. There's a lot of armies that kind of jam up relatively close to each other, mm -hmm. and you're just like, here's my transport in the middle of the table, disembark, advance out, and boom. All of a sudden, I just pop mortals on a whole bunch of different things. And Especially if you can hit, like, characters at low wounds or something like that. The thing is, Admech only has one unit with the grenades keyword, which is the uh, Taraxi um, Skystalkers. Mm -hmm. So this is one way to kind of replicate being able to do um, some amount of mortals. Mm -hmm. And I quite like it a lot in the Data Slum Conclave. Not against every army, but against those armies that want to bunch up and don't really have feel no pains, you can pop a lot of extra damage... Um, Onto, onto units, which is yeah. really nice. And you can do that repeatedly, turn after turn. Mm -hmm. So I quite like these guys a lot. I really think that they... Oh, they're great, yeah. I think that you honestly always want to have at least one unit mm -hmm. now because that rule of hitting... Is very good. Is super good. Whether it... There's a lot of units in the game right now that want to 
um, like hit you in combat. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to pop the transport uh, from an angle coming in from reserve, your Iron Striders, whatever, if you can pop the transport and then hit them with Corpus Gari, they are in, not going to go anywhere. Um, so I think one unit is automatic, yeah, in my opinion. Not the big squads. Uh, you can run the big squads in the uh, data, slam, data Slam Conclave, mm -hmm. but you probably just want a couple five-mans hanging around in most lists just to have access to this role. And they can sit in a transport, pop out, and do you know a bunch of things, but they also just clear chaff very well, mm -hmm. um, which means you can put your real guns into real things. Yep. All right. The Fulgurites. It is impressive how much worse these things are. So, they have no gun, but they have combat. Yes. They are... Two attacks, right? Yep, two attacks and on three. Somehow they have less attacks in combat than, than the other the guys. Than the Corpus Gari. Yeah, but I, they have no guns. I don't understand it. So uh, I believe these guys are slightly cheaper than Corpus Gari. I honestly forget the exact points right now, but I think they are slightly cheaper than Corpus Gari, or they're the they're basically the same cost. Um, I think they're around like 60 points, 65 points. Mm -hmm. So it's like 120 to 130 per 10. Yeah. Okay. So, you look at their data sheet and you're like, all right, a character needs to lead them in order for me to get the minus one to wound, which is their rule. Yep. So, that's already not great because you're spending at Why least. Why want a character to join in this unit? You're spending at least 45 points on the character, and none of them buff melee mm -hmm. in any real uh, manner. I mean, the manipulus can, but lethal yeah. hits is like still not great. AP1 mm -hmm. isn't, isn't great. But then you think about the Data Slam Conclave, mm -hmm. okay? So there's a lot of buffs you can put on these guys, and they actually are better than their data sheet. So this is where having a codex with rules really helps a unit, because the data sheet, as Quentin said, it's definitely worse than Corpus Gauri. Yeah. It's not really impressive at all. No. Let's talk about the buffs. Okay. Plus one attack, plus one strength. Strength seven, three attacks each. Okay, that, that is a very significant buffer this unit. On the charge. You have okay, to charge. Still, still, whatever. Still. Then... One CP plus one to wound. That also helps a lot. That, At that point, they're doing real damage. They're doing real damage. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, you can, I believe, four up fight on death on them mm -hmm. in, from the same detachment. So there are things that you can do. You can give them a four up in wound shooting, although you're really not going to do that. But there are ways to actually make them punch up in a pretty significant manner. Strength seven plus one to wound is actually a very good profile. It's like a viable... Um, like, with, yeah. with 30 attacks coming out of a 10-man Oh, wow. With that same... You actually do kill stuff at that point. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So in the Data Som Conclave, I think these guys are... I honestly would always run one unit in the Data Som Conclave. Well, they're just, great, a great counter charge. They're a great counter charge, and people want to get aggressive into Admech because mm -hmm. they're like, Admech doesn't do any damage. I'm just going to run up into them, and then you're like, all right, Corpus Scari, Go. one CP are going to murder you. Yeah. So, so I think even in the Data Som Conclave, you don't have to run them because mm -hmm. you might still lean heavier on the shooting in the Corpus Scari. But I think I would always run one unit. But... Um, most of my lists are running like two of these units in the Data Sum Conclave, mm -hmm. and you'll see them on Wednesday. I'm going to run them. I think if you're not running Data Sum, you probably don't take them. Without Data Sum Conclave, you probably don't take them. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to rank them on their best detachment, and I think they're at least A tier in yeah. the Data Sum Conclave. I agree. They, their rule still isn't going to come up. The, the minus no, yeah, one you're never going to. Because I don't think you're leading them with anybody. But man, well, like five up, five up's pretty good. Yep. Yeah. And they actually punch up when you put the combat bus on there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sicarian Infiltrators. Right, talk, these, about a, talk about a glow-up. Talk about a glow-up. They are fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned them a couple times. They're really good. Go ahead and read the yeah. data sheet. So you get either a Flechette Blaster and Taser Goad or a Stub Carbine and Power Weapons, which is like a bunch of shots at Laz Gun or a couple shots at Bolter. And, and then in combat, they have like some attacks at AP2 or some attacks with tank tips with no AP. They're like, they hit okay into like light infantry. But the big reason you take them, they infiltrate and they have stealth, is at the start of the fight phase, every enemy unit with an engagement range has to take a Battleshock test. And while an enemy unit is within six inches of this unit, they're minus one Battleshock. If they're, if your infiltrators are within six inches of a battle line unit, while an enemy unit is within six inches of your infiltrators, then they're minus two. This minus two is the point where battle shock really relevant. starts hurting even good armies. Like take, all of a sudden, your space marine leadership six unit is leadership eight. eight. Yeah, you take these guys, you take three scatteresses, easy, easy, easy money. cloud, <laughs> easy money, and the rad zone cohort. Yeah, uh, I think that every list should run at least one of these oh, units. This is great. 
because, um, like I said, just being able They're to... They're also just, like, a thing to go out and do things. Yeah, it's an infiltrating unit. They, I think they're around 70 points, so mm -hmm. um, it's, like, 140 for 10 of them. You can run the 10 mans in the Hunter cohort because it, there's a 1 CP 5 of Funeral Pain Strat, yeah. which is quite good on them. They mm -hmm. can also go back into Reserve. Uh, up to two Sakaran units can go back into Reserve. Oh, they four now. You can loan op them as well. Mm -hmm. Um... In the in the hunter cohort, so in the hunter hub cohort, you can actually run the bigger squads if you want to, and you also have redeploy in the hunter cohort, so you can deploy them literally on your opponent's line. Be like, if I go first, I'm going to charge, battle shock a bunch of things, um, and you can also run the um, vanguard unit with the marshal who has the scout infiltrate. Mm -hmm. Have your battle line unit there as well. So now it's minus two to all those battle shock tests. You charge like twenty sakarans and tag their whole army, battle shock everything. And move block them at the same time. There's there's some real play there. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Um, but just in general, I would always run one unit because being able to potentially force a minus two battle shock is nice, mostly for turning off defensive strats. Also, having an infiltrator thing. I know you can get it through other ways, but having one unit is really nice because sometimes you, you can use it to block out like a scout or something that's really important. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Rust Stalkers, not nearly as good. No. So they get plus one, two advance in charge rolls. If they're in your battle line, it's plus two advance in charge. And they hit kind of like a wet noodle. Yeah, both of these units don't hit particularly hard. They will kill like five random dudes. Yeah. But they're not going to punch up anymore like they did in ninth edition. Rust Stalkers could pretty much kill anything in the game. They will be lucky to kill anything of note now. Yeah, wow, this minutes. is not... Awesome. And part of the problem is that there aren't too many melee buffs. The army rule itself doesn't buff melee, mm -hmm. which is a weird uh, choice. Uh, there really should be some sort of thing in there. Because uh, Admech is a mixed arms army, yeah. uh, intentionally. Mm -hmm. So what the thing about the Rust Stalkers is you can get precision on one of their weapons. Yeah. But the other weapon has dev wounds. I think they... Uh, yeah, one, it's dev wounds or anti-infantry 3+, yeah. and then... The princeps Pres gets all three of them. Yep. They all have precision. Yep. So it's like they can kill out a cheap character. But frankly, once again, I would just rather run infiltrators. I'd max mm -hmm. out infiltrators before I start running rust stalkers. Yep. Uh, you can get a plus one AP for two CP in the hunter cohort, which mm -hmm. can help a bit. But still, hitting on fours, no rerolls, it's just not great. They're a cool unit. But they are, they look They amazing. used to go so fast. Yeah, they can still go pretty fast because yeah. you can... Uh, you can advance and charge them, but okay. at, at what point? Like, what, yeah. for what reason? They're they're not really doing damage, and Admech lacks damage dealers, so they can't afford to spend too many points on just nonsense. Mm -hmm. um, you need some amount of damage in your army. So I think Rust Stalkers, unfortunately, as much as it pains me because I have 30 of them, are down here. There's yep. really no reason to... The infiltrators actually they're have a synergistic better. rule... And they have infiltrate, so they can do all the mission play that you want, the move blocking. Rust Stalkers are supposed to do more damage, but really, they still don't do that much more damage, even though they have better AP and anti-infantry 3+. Mm -hmm. So, that's kind of... I don't really rate them very highly. I, I don't... I think you go for the other units first. You go for Corpus Gari, you go for Infiltrators, who are filling a similar role, or even Fulgurites, before you go for these guys. Yeah. All right, heading over to Taraxi. The Sky Stalkers. So you guys have a grenade keyword, which is actually relevant. Yep. They've got a bunch of loud gunshots and then no combat. <laughs> um, they can shoot and scoot, though. Yep. So they can just always do six inches, or if they end wholly within range of battle line, they, they, get, can, do, 12. they can do 12. That rarely ever comes up. Yep. But shoot and scoot six is totally fine. In the Hunter cohort, you can get a variety of things, like mm -hmm. a potential... Uh, plus one to wound for them, the plus one AP you could use on them. They also uh, can go back into reserve, which is very nice. So there's plenty of play in the hunter cohort for them, but as a mission tool, they can come in off the board edge, shoot something, move six, try and get on an objective, so they can do contest I, plays potentially. I really value shoot and scoot quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I actually found out that is hilarious is that investigate signals... Um, Oh, I guess you can't shoot and move them. Yeah, you can't shoot. It checks during the um, in, not where you are. You can basically you can you can, you can technically investigate signals from anywhere on the table. It only checks if you're in the right spot at the end of the turn. So if you like move into position somehow during the turn, then you can do it. So, but so not Eldar. relevant here. But so Eldar. Yeah, basically just Eldar. <laughs> um, 
But yes, no, I, I don't like hate these guys. I think Fire and Fade's a really viable rule. Yeah, so now they their gun is basically doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, just like shocking them <laughs> to nothing. But their rule is good enough, and the fact that they have grenades, I quite like them. Um, I think they're a consistent choice. You mm-hmm. don't have to run them because there are other mission tools that you can run. But if you're looking for grenades, so for some extra mortals, and you want the shoot and scoot ability, mm-hmm. then they fill that role pretty darn well. And they're, yeah. they're just solid. Mm-hmm. I wish they did more damage. But I agree. Yeah. I wish their guns were like AP1 or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I wish there was AP in this army. <laughs> okay. Sterilizers. Sterilizers. Okay, they got a big glow up in their rules. So the, these guys... Their old rule used to be on a four up. They hit a target that wasn't a vehicle or a monster, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, on a four up, you would be able to minus two to move. Advance and charge. Yes. They gave it to just Corpus Cari, and Corpus Cari just have to hit. They don't have to roll four up. So and you're going to hit because you have a billion attacks. Exactly. So these guys instead got the reroll ones to wound. Mm-hmm. Uh, if their opponent is... If, uh, if, you're near, if you are near a battle line, then... If if this unit is within a near, within six inches of a battle line, then you can reroll wounds instead. But you can you have to target a, a unit on an objective marker. Yeah, an enemy yeah. unit on an objective marker, you get reroll once to wound, which is mm-hmm. fine. But if you're within six of battle line, full rerolls to wound. Now with the other strats like plus one to wound or the plus one AP, you can actually do quite a bit of damage with their flamers now. Yeah. Um you can get maybe yeah, you so you can get maybe. I actually like these guys quite a bit. Um, I think they're quite strong. Yes. I have been typically running like one to two units because they're a very good skirmisher in the hunter cohort. Like I said, they can go back into reserve as well and just get back into your opponent's backfield. So you don't have to run a Calidus Assassin or other such units. These models are also so cool. They are so cool. They are large though. They're very big. They're very big and it's annoying to get them on their bases. Yes. But I... I honestly think with that data sheet change, mm-hmm. I like them better than the Sky Stalkers now mm-hmm. because they can actually do some amount of damage. Because first of all, you skip the one of the hard parts of Admech, which is hitting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you just hit, you just... and now you just have to wound, and there yeah. are ways to buff that. So uh, I like them quite a bit. Yeah. I think they're pretty good. Okay. The Cerberus Raider. Talk about a unit that you really don't see too often. <laughs> I. How many points does this thing cost right now? Uh, I believe it is 60 points for three of them, so they're 20 points a model. I like this unit. So I think it's pretty solid. It's got Scout 9. Yep. And if your opponent ends a move and within, within nine, 9... you could move either D6 or flat 6 if you end within 6 of a battle line. I think that's a great ability. You can make really awkward move blocks. I think this unit is great. I yeah. like it a lot. It is a very solid unit. Now in the Hunter cohort, it can get access to Stealth now mm-hmm. and a variety of other different buffs. It doesn't really do the amount of damage, and it doesn't have the, when you get charged, you move away, which was its biggest benefit, was you do an awesome move block, and mm-hmm. then you move very far away. Yeah. Now, you can do a move block and potentially move like back behind terrain or something, mm-hmm. but it's not really any sort of, it's not as much guaranteed. Um, so, the reason that you don't run them all the time is because there are other choices that are filling a similar role. Mm-hmm. Infiltrators do a similar role. The Taraxi do a similar role. Corpus Gari can also perform a similar role. Mm-hmm. So they are kind of... They used to have a very unique rule mm-hmm. that put them over the edge, but they don't... It's Their rule is cool, but you can move block with other stuff, and it's not the end of the world. That's fair. I also just like kind of quite like chip damage and dev wounds, because I'm you to finish like, through the last couple points of... You'd be shocked at how little you're going to ever do with them. Well, you get like a damage or two through, right? Maybe. You get Maybe. nine shots, you get five hits, there should be one dev wound in there. Maybe. <laughs> Sometimes it tanks up one. You just gotta kill it. Um, this is another unit that I think should just have grenades, frankly. Oh, um, they don't. Yeah, they really yeah. should. I, yeah, B2 is probably pretty fine for them. It's just a, it's a fine unit. It's mm-hmm. a little, a good, cheap skirmish unit, but it's not gonna, it's competing with other roles. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. other units in the similar role. Okay. okay. Sulfur Hounds. Sulfur Hounds. Um, so these guys, you get like some pistols and then like a pretty interesting flamer it's always strength three but it's ap1 it's only nine inch range only nine inch range though which is sad um and then you you do a bunch of charge mortals when you they did change the rule slightly so that only the models with an engagement range get to do the mortals so you can't have a big unit swing around and have one guy tap and exactly so their mortals are are still the best part of them Mm -hmm. is that between them the grenade strat um you made the corpus gari strat Mm -hmm. or the fulgrite yeah, to help you can them. do a bunch of random mortals. Yeah, you can do some amount of random mortals. Um, 
They can also move block very well. They're still relatively cheap. So it's a, another unit that is just solid. But mm -hmm. you see this. It's There's a lot of units that fill a similar role of they can move block. Mm -hmm. They can do a mission action for relatively cheap. They do a little bit of damage. They don't not. really do much damage. Yeah. Um, and that's where Admech lacks in this book mm -hmm. is there's not a lot of things that are going to be able to punch through a tough target. For the breaches are so high up there. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Cybernetic data smith. Yeah, you're going to take care of these next two data sheets. Okay. Well, he's got a garbage pistol, and he's bad in combat. Yep. What does he do? I hope he's cheap. Well, if he joins Castellan Robots, um, then he gets to kind of put them into one of three modes. He turns a little switch dial thing. You get either plus two attacks equipped to ranged weapons, or plus two melee attacks, or plus one toughness. Okay. I mean, the plus two attacks are pretty nice. Yep. Uh, it's like, the, it used to be that you had to take a leadership test to get it off. Now yeah. you just get to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so that is very nice. In addition, it used to be that he gave his unit infantry keyword. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden, anti-infantry will work against your castle unit. They fixed that as well in this long okay. paragraph over here. Yeah. So nice little globe there. He's, I think, like 35 points. He's some, like, some cheap amount of points. Mm -hmm. I don't expect him to get more expensive. You better not. Uh, but he doesn't have the do the um, Doctrina's role, and he doesn't have Cult Mechanicus. So those two things mean that if you want those, if you want the um, the army rule, you have to go ahead and put him in the Cybernetica um, detachment. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that is probably the worst attachment here. You can make it's them really a little bit good. faster, a little bit more yeah. durable. But none of those strats are like, wow. This you also is... use them all in your command phase. Exactly. So you have to, all right, I just spend my CP, boom, I get this buff on this unit, and that's that. Mm -hmm. There's no affecting multiple units like a lot of the other strats, and there's nothing in there that's completely game-changing. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, that detachment is pretty poor overall. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the robots and data smith are better in some of the other detachments because, frankly, the uh, doctrinas don't do a tremendous amount for the unit. Because mm -hmm. the best, the best of um, loadout for the Castellan robots is the flamer mm -hmm. plus the um, the two fists. Yeah, the guns don't do anything. No, they're shockingly terrible. They're, they're terrible. So, I was like, oh, plus two attacks to all your range weapons. Then I read them and I was like, wow, that is just garbage. That's that's not good. So the flamer getting plus one AP against your opponent in their deployment zone is that ever happening? Probably not. Probably not. Um, so where where else are you going to really see um, this being utilized? Not like it's just not going to get too much benefit. The real thing is like turn one you can pull them on the line and have the minus one to incoming AP and in mm -hmm. within your deployment zone and cover, and then they're pretty tanky. But they still need a lot of support. Go ahead and read the Castellan Robots. So they move six, which is not awesome. Their toughness nine, two up, five up, seven wounds, and leadership seven with OC two. Um, they give the dude, the little character who joins him before it feels the pain, and then if you make a saving throw of a six, you take the unit attacking them takes immortal wounds. And then you have two arm slots and then a little shoulder slot. So your arm slots can either be a fist, which is um, four attacks, hitting on fours at 12, two, three. Or you get a Foster Blaster, which is uh, three attacks at six, one, one. If you have two Foster Blasters, you don't get six attacks, you get three, but they're twin linked. Um, and the fists become twin linked if you take two fists. Mm -hmm. um, and then the little shoulder gun thingamajuhiki um, is either a... String six heavy flamer or three shots at six one two. Why is the shoulder one damage two and the arm ones are damage one? They were just like we have to make them different. I don't know. I really. Don't. Why are they not just the same gun? I don't know. Okay. Well, these things could be kind of cool if you could give them like three of the same gun and then give them plus two attacks and they made fifteen attacks of robot, but they don't do that. So they're kind of sad. They're really not good. The thing is, like, they're, they're also. Move six vehicles that can't go through walls? Yes. Wow. So they're very easily move blocked. They're relatively slow. They don't benefit from a lot of the army rules. They don't like dramatically get better. <laughs> like the Cybernetica Detachment should make these guys awesome. Yeah. And the fact that they don't is a complete and utter failure. Yes. So with that in mind, um, I think honestly these are... Uh, the, so like I believe they're... Um, 
think they're like 215 for two guys. Then the 35 points for the Data Smith. Like, not even that durable. They're not that durable. They're going to die to people's anti tank. Uh, like, they can get durable specifically in your deployment zone with minus one AP if you're in the Cybernetica detachment mm-hmm. and sitting in cover and yeah. your opponent doesn't ignore mm-hmm. cover. They're reasonably tanky there, but who cares? If you have Castellan robots in your deployment zone, nobody cares. Whatever. So what? They're just sitting there. They're not doing anything for your army. So they have to be in the middle of the table where they're not getting the defense that stacks to make them quite durable. Now, like I said, you can bring the Tech Priest, Engine Seer, and give the one of the robots a 5 of Fino Pain, which means he can tank uh, quite a bit of extra damage. But there's no stacking multiple defense, and there's no getting a ton of uh, infantry. Uh, sorry, a ton of uh, like anti-infantry firepower. Like The flamers are okay, but you're not really clearing tons of chaff. You're not punching up into vehicles because with your combat... It's still just hitting on fours. Mm-hmm. As soon as you hit, you'll probably wound them. I used to run, in like, 8th edition. I had a unit of six of these things. Yeah, I have a unit of six, too. Yeah, I do all the phosphor. And they had an outrageous amount of shots. Mm-hmm. You could get, like, 96-plus shots, 100. I, yeah, I was like, it was something insanity. I really liked that unit. That unit has been dead for yeah, a long for, time. Yeah, for a long time. Um, and I thought that the Cybernetica Detachment would really buff these guys mm-hmm. in a way that made them quite playable. Mm-hmm. I think they're still heinously overcosted for what you get. Yeah, they're really not good. So hopefully they go down significantly, and then I will think about them again. But they are just not even close to being worth uh, what what they are. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. I think they are with call in. They are terrible. Yeah, they're not. They're they're, they're, they actively hurt you because you're losing a lot of stuff, and stuff is one of the best things Mm. that Admech can do. Yeah. Just I'd rather have like five units than the robots plus. Mm Mm-hmm. The death smith. Oh, okay. The Iron Strider Balistari. Okay. So, Iron Striders are around 50 points. Do these things cost more dollars than points? I believe they're exactly a <laughs> dollar per point. Um, they might actually be $60 per... I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure. They've always been crazy expensive. They're very expensive. Yeah. Uh, needless to say, the data sheet itself is is solid in a defensive manner for their yes. points. It's, five, it's, T7, it's T7, 7 wounds, 5 up invul, and 3 up save. Mm-hmm. They can Wait, this, a, this data sheet is like some a little bit of toughness and a save worse than the Castellan. Yeah. It, okay, cool. <laughs> sure. <laughs> for like half the cost. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't need a character. Now, its thing is, is um, it's only one shot on the last cannon, which is generally what you're going to take, because it's strength 12, AP 3, D6 plus 1, mm-hmm. sustained 1, twin-linked, Yeah. but it just hits on 4s. Mm-hmm. So in order to get efficiency out of these guys from damage, you need to run a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. They are cheap enough to run a bunch of them, and they're durable enough. In the Hunter cohort, they get access to stealth, which is nice, um, uh, but they can't access the 5 of Fino Pain strat. That's locked to Sidonians. Their data sheet rule changed a little bit, it is now advance and shoot, mm-hmm. so you don't have to be in Conqueror Protocol if you don't want to be, and then fall back and shoot um, while, while re-rolling Desperate Escape Tests. All that's very solid, but they can't fall back and charge, which was one of the big things of you charge them in, and they tie things up, then they fall back, uh, shoot and charge again. So the fall back and charge is now locked to just the Dragoons. But you do get a Laz Cannon, and if you run, you know, like six plus of these, you start to get into the numbers where you can reliably do some amount of damage. And six of them is only like around 300 points right now and probably mm-hmm. won't get that much more expensive. So that's a reasonable amount of anti-tank for that price point. That's a that breacher squad. really annoying. Hard to, that's really a hard breacher to. squad. Yeah. Right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is way less consistent because I've rolled it plenty of times, no sixes to hit, and then all of a sudden I hit like twice, mm-hmm. and then my opponent makes a save and I do a little bit of damage. But other times against Quinton, I'll roll box card, I'll roll sixes to hit, additional hits, and then it'll be like, oh, my nightbringer died. Boom, you're just dead. So you never know what's going to happen with these. That's the consistency problem that Admech has. Yes. But the consistency comes through having a lot of stuff. And these guys are durable, they're fast, uh, they have a very good data sheet rule. So I think they are. You're either going to run one mans just to have something relatively durable and annoying to kill, or you're going to run them in bigger squads. But yeah, they're, I really they're like very them. good. Yeah. They are one of the better data sheets because their price is low. If their price was high, they were like 75 points, 80 points plus. Mm. No, absolutely not. But at like around 50? Yeah, mm. 100%. Sidonian Dragoons with Taser Lances. Okay. 
So these guys are the combat version. They finally split the Dragoon up in two data sheets. Yes, the, there was a second option called the Radium Gisele. It was nobody, astoundingly terrible. Nobody ever took. Okay. <laughs> so they split these up. We don't have the points on what the Radium Gisele variant is going to be, but if the Dragoon stays around that 60-point range mm -hmm. where it's at and the Radium is a bit cheaper, maybe like 50 points like an Iron Strider, mm -hmm. um, then... It's a real conversation, but still, I think I really like the Dragoon because it's data sheet rule, mm -hmm. which is the fact that you get advance and charge built in, don't need to spend the CP, so in the Hunter cohort, you can advance and charge something else and advance and charge these guys. Mm -hmm. So the main role that the Iron Strider body is good at is tying up your opponent's resources, yeah, I think taking away a movement go. phase, being durable enough that they have to dedicate real resources there instead of elsewhere, and then they fall back and charge, mm -hmm. uh, right back into enemy stuff if they don't die. In the Hunter cohort, they can 1 CP, 5 Athena Pain from Bionic Endurance. That is a lot of beef to get through. It's already annoying for your opponent when you have stealth uh, and the durability that they have baseline. Mm -hmm. But when you throw five of Funo Pain on there, on the whole unit, whew, it is a nightmare to deal with. And um, I have to build more Dragoons because Games Workshop, uh, you know, is, is forcing me to. I kind of love Flight of the Chickens, though. It's... Uh, the Hunter Cohort can run a lot of them. I think in the Hunter Cohort, you literally run nine Dragoons and some <laughs> amount of Iron Striders. I know people don't want to hear that because it's expensive, but, mm -hmm. like, that is where we're looking. It is very good at tying things up and being annoying. So, uh, I think Dragoons are fantastic at their current price point. Yep, so, if they get more expensive, I'll like them a bit less and probably lean mm -hmm. more towards Iron Striders. But in the Hunter Cohort, they're straight up S tier. In other things, running a solo one uh, solo Dragoons mm -hmm. is still very good. Yeah. Um, so the Radium Drizelle version is kind of weird because we have no idea what it's going to cost. Yep. Um, it has to be cheaper than the Dragoons. It has to. It's, I think it's going to be like anywhere between 55 and 45. Something, something like in that ballpark. That. If they're 45 points a model, you might just take them purely for the defensive stat and yep. then just run them at your opponent as a move block. Because they're Sidonian, so mm -hmm. they can access the 5 of Fino Pain for 1 CP. Yep. So it's just more durable bodies. But they mm -hmm. don't have the advantage in charge or the fallback in charge. Yeah, I mean, their offense does actually nothing. They'll get reroll hits against some nonsense unit, and sure. maybe they'll do something. But they're just there for a body. Just yeah. a body. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to assume that they're cheaper than Dragoons, and just going to be right up in this area over mm -hmm. here, uh, because it's just cheap bodies. Yeah, I agree. And you totally could just run max of these, probably, mm -hmm. and uh, give your opponent enormous amounts of frustration as their whole army is tied up by... They're all seven each. Ugh, exactly. It's the worst. <laughs> but I, th I think, in my mind, you're going to run somewhere between three and six Iron Striders. I don't think you go for the full nine. I think you want some amount of Breachers. But you totally could go for nine Iron Striders if you wanted to. But anywhere between t uh, three and six of them. And then Dragoons, you're looking at, like, either 2-2-2 two, 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 or 3-3. Three, three, or you could go for the full 9, 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Um, and then Radium Gisales will come down to price point. But if they're also cheap, you can just have a ton of beef. Now, you do give up Bring It Down, but it's the same thing as Tau. It's like, yeah, you give up Bring It Down, but your opponent has to absolutely pull their hair out mm -hmm. dealing with all of this while you score tons of points with the rest of your army. Yeah. Because it's still, like, you know, you've six Iron Striders, or nine Iron Striders would be 450, if they stay the same, and then um, the Dragoons are 180 for three. So you're, you know, you're looking at like around half your list is that. So you have another half of your list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a lot of, a lot of wounds to get through. So many wounds. A lot of armies just don't have the capability to get through that quick enough. And if they're tied up at the same time um, and can't fall back and do things, they're, the worst. they're in a world of hurt. Yeah. Uh, it's been one of Adamek's strongest aspects is you can just put a lot of durable vehicles into your opponent's face and be like, can you kill quick enough while I score tons of points? No, I can actually win. <clears throat> right. And the they might do some damage. The Scorpius Disintegrator, this is the like main battle tank thing. Yes. Uh, so it has two different guns. One is the Ferromite Cannon, which is supposedly anti-tank. It's three shots. It's a fine profile. Uh, it would really be better if it could get access to a Norse cover or extra AP, you know, rerolls. Um, it does get plus one to hit against enemy vehicles and monsters, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, in addition to that, you can get um, an indirect gun, mm -hmm. uh, the Belarus Energy Cannon, which is 2d6 shots, strength 7, AP 2, 2 one damage. damage. Yeah. So against units in your opponent's deployment zone, 
you can get AP3, mm -hmm. uh, which is not bad. And then, um, in addition, you get plus one to hit against enemy infantry units mm -hmm. when you target. So, like, both weapons are totally fine. I actually uh, don't even hate the Fairmite you, Cannon. You get the Disruptor Missile as well, and mm -hmm. some Stubber Shots. So, like, you get a fine tank, and it's one of the tanks that actually benefits a lot from the uh, Protector Doctrina. Yeah, it's also tough for this tank with a 2-up so save. Sits there with plus... Uh, plus one heavy you get plus one to hit mm -hmm. and then uh, you get minus one to incoming ap like, yeah just sits there it can be buffed by call if you really wanted to uh but it can sit there and do fine mm -hmm. the issue with it is that games workshop has vastly overcosted it yeah. mainline battle tanks are priced in the 125 to 150 point range mm -hmm. this thing started at 195 and went down to like 180 right now is it the same cost of fire for some finally yeah it is it is <laughs> i believe so it's way worse than those other tanks. Yeah. It's worse than the Lehman Ross. Worse than the Lancer. Yeah. Yeah. It's worse than every other tank, but mm -hmm. it's more expensive. And I think it's solely because it has potential access to an indirect platform mm -hmm. that just isn't that good. No. Uh, if yeah, the, indirect the indirect platform was, not scary. if it was two damage, it would be scary mm -hmm. with three of them, but it's just not. It's not scary. Games Workshop, it's not scary. Mm -hmm. Make this thing cost around 150, 145 points, yeah. and then you will see it. But it's just too expensive for what you get. Mm -hmm. um, so if it goes down significantly, I will reevaluate my opinion of it. But my opinion is that it is not actively detrimental because it can actually do things. Mm -hmm. But it takes a, because it's so expensive, it takes away a lot of resources. I would just rather have three Iron Striders than this. With yeah. points to spare. Mm -hmm. uh, ludicrous. Yeah. Okay. The Dune Rider. I like this one a lot. Yeah. I think it's 18 shots. And it finally gained Twin Link on it. Did it not before? No, it didn't. Oh, wow. Uh, the Flyers had the Twin Link, but yeah. it didn't, even though it is supposed to be. Yeah. So, basically, this thing changed. So, now if you get out and it shoots at a target, the unit that got out gets four rolls to wound, which means your rangers get four rolls to hit, four rolls to wound, as you dump 20 or 10 OC2 bodies on an objective. And then you shoot with a billion shots. You kill, this thing kills light infantry really well. So it's it's a very it's a nice upgrade on the tank. It used to have the ability to advance and disembark, mm -hmm. which was fine, but you were always getting the objective anyway. So I didn't really value that super highly. The reroll wounds actually helps the infantry punch up quite a bit, whether mm -hmm. Corpus Cari or the basic troops. So that's nice. I wish it was the end of the turn, like the Eldar Falcon. Yeah. So that the melee could benefit from it, and that would help a, a lot. Um, that would really help Rust Stalkers and mm -hmm. Infiltrators, etc., a lot. Uh, but they didn't do that uh, because Eldar get special privileges. Yeah. But instead, you get the reroll wounds from shooting, and it helps, like, Ikiria Draxus in a unit of troops popping out will do quite a bit of damage. Yes. Um, you know, is it the end of... Is it going to be, like, mind-blowing? I tried it out. It's still not that great because the basic weapons don't do very much, and you're really relying on hitting um, with the special weapons mm -hmm. to punch through most of the damage. Yeah. But it's okay. Um, and at the same time, you're move blocking, contesting objective. It's not that expensive either, right? And the transport, I think, is around 80 points. So that's perfectly reasonable mm -hmm. for it. You can run the engine seer to give it the five of Fino Pain, make it even more annoying to deal with. Um, I think it's it's very good. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think you always... Transports are just great right now. Oh, be, yeah. Because you want to be able to... Um, Uh-oh. It's getting cut off. No. I'm going to drop this down one so that you can see the transport. Yeah. The, um... The fact this thing is not open top is hilarious. Uh, it is literally has firing <laughs> things on it. So I don't know what the holdup is. Or like, who on the design team is dead set against this thing being open topped yeah. with firing deck? <laughs> it's just, I don't see. It has, it to, be, it has to be one, literally does not have a top. one weirdo yeah. who is just on there and dead set against it. He's just like, no, 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 no. No, it can't possibly be, even though it is literally open, there are little firing things. You can put the two models inside and they're actually shooting out. You could do all of that, but still it's not firing deck. Mm -hmm. Somehow. It, it literally has a firing deck. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it literally does. It literally has a firing deck. So whoever you are, you're wrong. And I just need to say that, and I hope chat will back me up on this, but mm -hmm. you're wrong, fix it. Put the keyword on there. Anyway, and, end of discussion. Transport is fantastic. It is a big upgrade on its rule. It's uh, still not as amazing as it sounds. Marshall in there, full reels to hit. The transport roll full reels to wound. You would think that this would do quite a bit of damage. It's just the weapons by themselves aren't that great. So it's mm -hmm. still not like punching up in a dramatic way. But it's fine. It will clear chaff very consistently now. And that's a good enough win for Atmec. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Next up, Onager Dunecrawler. Used to have one of the most useless rules in the game, which was... It go over terrain features. Woo! If the terrain was four inches less, it could ignore it. Well, the good tournaments just have that for the small terrain anyway, so you didn't need it on your data sheet. So they took that away and gave it an actual rule, which is that battle line models wholly within six inches of it get a four-up infall. That's a really good rule. That is a very good rule. It means that Skatari all of a sudden can have a four-up invuln from ranged attacks, stealth, and um, be quite annoying to get through. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is another platform that hits on fours, no rerolls. You can get access to heavy if you want to. And this is one of the things that actually benefits from heavy, mm -hmm. from the protector imperative, because it's durable enough. It's a two-up save, four-up invul, and a bunch of wounds. You can give it the five of phenol pain from the engine seer, mm -hmm. and it could sit out in the open and be totally fine. These are really annoying to kill. They're annoying to kill. You can heal them back with the engine seer. So... I quite like the Onager. I think having one in a Skatari veteran cohort list is pretty useful if you're mm. running like 40 plus Skatari mm. because you will get some models wholly within six of it. You just advance it up behind the midfield ruin and string the guys out and you can soak up quite a bit of extra damage on your Skatari with just having one of these. And then it can pop out yeah. and be annoying. No, I, th I think it's great. And the new shot laser is a real gun. It, it is a gun. It's certainly a gun. I don't know I mean, about... like, you have to respect it. Do you? No, um, you... It can... You should. If you take three of them... Like... <laughs> you take three, but, like, nobody's taking three of them. Okay. Well. Uh, they, they get scary if they just sit there and potentially get the extra... Um, the plus one to hit and hit on threes. Um, it, you can run, like, a call ball style with it. It's just... It's slow-moving castle. It's not really yeah. what the 10th edition is about. No, not at all. But I think this this is quite solid. I don't think you have to run it, um, but I think it's quite solid. Mm -hmm. It's up here. Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's not going to be in every list. Uh, like if it would, if you could string out the units so that one model was within six, whole oh, unit gets four up invul. Everyone. Then I would be even more impressed with it. But it's still kind of stuck in as it is, mm -hmm. and um, I wish the guns were just slightly better on it. Yeah. All right. Last data sheet the is flyers. the flyer. So I didn't go ahead and pick out all three flyers. I'm just going to talk about all three and then rank them. They all hover, which is nice. They all hover, so they can start on the board. Uh, which means you can potentially deliver an alpha strike. Mm -hmm. Although, when you read these rules, you will say what they still are not going to hit that hard. So they... let's do the Stratoraptor first. Yes. The Strat... Oh, no, sorry. The Fusilov is the one that's first. Um, you have a Cognos Heavy Stubber, right? Yep. And then it does some random mortals so it flies over you. This thing is terrible. Yeah, it's it really, used not, to be really very, not good. It used to be very good because it had several additional rules uh, mm -hmm. from stratagems, which was... The ability to potentially turn off auras. Mm -hmm. It also had the ability to uh, slow enemy units down. Yeah. It has none of that. It just has... And it's only six dice now. It used to be able yes, to roll like, yeah. a lot more dice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you might do like three mortals. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then your random guns are not going to do very much. And it's an expensive chassis. I don't remember exactly how many points it is. It's probably around like 150, 160 points. In that ballpark, yeah. It's probably somewhere in that ballpark. It also, in the previous editions, used to be dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. Like 120, 110 points. It was very, very cheap originally when it first came out. So it's not that cheap anymore, and it it has worse bombs and doesn't have as much synergy. Um, so I think the, the Fusilov is uh, straight up D tier. It's terrible. Yeah. Don't run it. The thing is, they also used to have more defense. Because you used in your deployment Shock zone, from minus one damage. And... They used to be able to stack plus one save and cover. Mm -hmm. Now you can get cover and minus one to incoming AP in your deployment zone. But at the end of the day, they're not doing anything whatsoever in your deployment zone, mm -hmm. and they'll just be there for the turn. So like they can, you can start them on the board, and they realistically will survive against most armies in the mm -hmm. game, because most armies don't have super long range anti tank. Yeah. But then they do nothing for however many points you're spending. Well, once again, three Iron Striders, three Dragoons, that's way better. Because uh, even though their damage is inconsistent, they can actually get onto objectives, tie things up, etc. Now, you can charge them because they have hover. Which is hilarious. they're just not that good. No, they're not. And their bases are very awkward sized. The thing is, the model's also so big, so it's so easy to shoot them. It's so easy to move block them, too. Yeah. To force them off the table. They're, like, that big from yeah, wingtip to wingtip. No, yeah. the base is, like, huge. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, anyway. The, the, the base is bigger than a night base, right? Or is, uh, is it I think it, it is a night base, I believe. Yeah. It's, it's very close. So, ugh, I, I don't like that. Uh, next up is... Is the Stratoraptor? Stratoraptor is the best of them by far. Yeah, because you get the Twin Last Cannon and some Phosphor Blasters, which are pretty good. 
and the heavy stubber. Yep. So you get a decent amount of firepower. You get plus one to hit against non-fly, I believe. Is there damage you um, But Yes, correct. So all of a sudden, you can hit on threes, and then you can get plus one AP against your opponent in their deployment zone by mm -hmm. being in conquer. So at that point, with running a bunch of them, you can do some amount of damage. Still not consistent, can still totally underperform. If Admet got the Ironstorm Light Detachment, where you get a reroll to hit or wound, or, or the good. Eldar Detachment, which is better, of reroll hit and wound, yeah. uh, then this type of stuff would be... This army would be very consistent. That would be an amazing detachment for Admet, because it would elevate almost all the All the new lasers, the chickens, things like that. It would make them significantly better. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't do that, uh, so sad but this can do you can you can be like a an seam here and try and go for a flyer heavy build i still think that there's plenty of opportunity for that to not do enough damage and then you just lose whatever they're like 170 180 points yeah I'm you just dying. lose the two in return and then that's it yeah. so i typically i think admex best approach is controlling the center tying mm. up your en enemy away from objectives and scoring a lot of points and kill as much as you can but alpha strike potential it could work in the um hunter cohort where like you like i said clandestine infiltrator vanguard unit three units of infiltrators on the line you go first send them up the stratoraptors fly up and you tie up a bunch of stuff kill one thing and all of a sudden your opponent's completely pinned in their deployment so that could work uh it's not going to be consistent because all of a sudden you go second and you're like this is quite a bit less strong you get to redeploy your units away, but you don't have the all the awesome move blocks and the tie-ups and the battle shocks early. So at the end of the day, I think the Stratoraptor is probably okay and certainly playable. Yeah, I agree. Um, it might honestly even just be in here. I, I think it's, it's just like a, a very, solid support. solid thing. It's just okay. a solid support piece. You can run it, uh, but you're committed to that kind of style. Mm -hmm. Um, the trans vector, this is a transport. And one more note on oh, yeah. that. The reason that I'm um, privileging it a little more than the Scorpius Disintegrator mm -hmm. is because not only is it a bit cheaper, but it can actually get angles on your opponent. Yeah, because it moves pretty fast. So it can get back there. It can kill that unit of Swooping Hawks or mm -hmm. Warp Spiders or whatever before your opponent wants to deal with it. Yeah. Um, the trans vector, basically you just get the stubber, but then you can hold 11 dudes. And it can show up in strategic reserves from turn one, two, or three. Once again, if the Admech infantry, if Admech had an infantry unit that shot hard, like Devastator Marines or something like yeah. that, that these type of plays would be very strong. Mm -hmm. But they don't. Yeah, they're gonna pop out with a bunch of low AP, middling shots that aren't gonna do very much. Mm -hmm. So Transvector has always been relatively mediocre of a unit, even though it has been able to come in turn one like a drop pod. Mm -hmm. It's still to come in with what. Yeah. Nothing that's going to really do a devastating amount of damage. You show up and you shoot them with some galvanic shots and some stubbers, and then you die. Yeah. Yeah. So if this thing could airdrop breachers in or something actually quite strong, mm -hmm. then it would be a different conversation. But it really can't. So that's unfortunate. Yeah. Now, uh, just to make the Admac player sad, this da this tier list still has this lovely boy <laughs> here. The Tarax uh, drill. The one that I have three gorgeously painted. Oh, of. yeah, they're great. Uh, and if it was still existing, it'd be here in my heart. <laughs> but uh, it does not exist. It does not exist. Anyway, so uh, to wrap this up, um, Admech, I think they did a much better job at internally balancing this book. This book feels very internally balanced. A lot of stuff just fills a role. It is overlapping, mm -hmm. but it fills that role fine. And you yeah. can run most of the units in this book and not feel too bad about them. Most of them benefit significantly from the veteran... The Sorry, the... Skitari Hunter Cohort, mm -hmm. um, because most of the units are Skitari and mm -hmm. benefit significantly from that. But they can be run in pretty much most of the detachments. Unfortunately, the detachments only benefit a certain number of units. I really wish they were a little more broad, uh, like some of the Space Marine detachments. Um, but because they're they're like not as restrictive, where you can't run certain types of units, like uh, some of the specialist detachments in, in 9th or 8th, then you still get the flexibility of running the units that you want to run. Mm. So overall, the army has a lot of data sheets that fill roles that Admech needs. The issue here is that outside of Breachers, there's not a lot that's consistent. You get consistency from having a lot of the same unit running multiples mm -hmm. uh, because they're cheap enough that you can, but you don't get it. You don't get too many plays where I pop this, my opponent commits this, I will kill it with this, 
and then I'll be able to put the rest of these resources elsewhere. Mm -hmm. It's maybe I won't even kill this, so I have to think about tying it up, move blocking it, etc. So that's where Admech has, as a player, you have to think is just assume I'm going to do the bare minimum amount of damage here, and what's my backup plan? Okay, I'm going to pull off this move block. I'm going to tie this up in combat, uh, etc. Uh, I'm going to charge onto this objective to make sure that even if this unit survives, it doesn't control the objective uh, for primary. That's the way you have to play Admech. And luckily, Admech has units that do those roles well. I just wish, as an Admech player, that the damage of the army was a bit higher and more consistent so that I could play a damage style like you could in uh, 9th edition and 7th edition, mm -hmm. uh, even though I didn't play that edition. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Um, but this, this codex is certainly balanced. I think this codex can use more points drops. Not significant ones, except for certain units like Call. Call should drop like 60, 80 points, 100%. Oh, yeah, not even close. Castle and Robots, <clears throat> at down 50. I, like, what a... Huge amount of points. Super chat, actually. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to... Uh, okay, <clears throat> we'll it, it actually that. literally goes into this. Yeah. Thank you so much, Grokvar, for your $10 super chat. Thanks for the awesome data sheet overview. Recastlins, how cheap would they need to be for you to take them? I think 50 points model. 50, 60... If they're 50 points, I'm definitely taking them. That yeah. That's... Yes. Uh, Maybe 50 like 70. So 50 to 70, at, that kind of ball. At what, point would I, uh, at what point would I consider running them? Um, it's a good question. I feel like if they were 65 to 70 points per model, mm -hmm. that would be where I'm very interested in yeah. thinking about them as a tool to mm -hmm. use in my army. A good, like, counter charge, support piece. Yeah, like, solid enough where I'm not investing tons of points. The unit itself has to be, with the, with the, um, with the data smith, has to be below 180 points, oh, in yeah. my mind. So that would mean if each robot is 70, that's 140, this guy's... Th so they would have to be, honestly, around like 60 points. Mm -hmm. So they'd be 120, and then he would be uh, 35 or so. Yeah. So if they were around like 65 or points, I would be quite interested in running them. Um, but yeah, they, they seriously need a huge drop. The unit itself doesn't do very much. Its best thing is that it's durable. Yeah. And unfortunately, Admec has other durable things that are faster and can actually tie things up. Mm -hmm. it is, it's, it's a problem of if you run a unit and you put weapons on these guys, your weapons, yes, they might have a good fist. Like, it's strength 12, AP3, flat 3, I believe, yeah. with twin linked, if you run the double. That's a good profile. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you tell them that hits on fours with no re-rolls to hit, <laughs> yeah. you're going to hit with half of those. Perfect. Then you'll wound with most of the wound rolls. Yeah. But just take their number of attacks and cut it in half, and that's what your opponent might try and save. Mm -hmm. you, I feel like they don't understand how bad hitting on fours with no rerolls is. It's really bad. It's also it's, very swingy. That's the problem, is that you cannot count on doing any plays that are damage-related with this army, and that's why you have to have enough cheap stuff to do other things, because they have to have backup plans. So when your damage pops off, it feels great. Feels like you're playing a 40k army, but when it doesn't pop off, and it and that will happen at probably two out of the five turns, maybe even three out of the five turns, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're just in a bad spot if you're not prepared for it. Yeah. So, I think that if they're down there, so what are they like 100 points per model right now? 100 points per model. Yeah, they they need a significant drop. I would drop them at least 35 points per model, and and yeah. start there. Start there, yeah. Call like I said, huge. He needs a significant. He drop. probably needs to go down to 60 points. Um, the Cataphron Destroyers, like I said, it, their, we you know, their weapon isn't horrible. Mm -hmm. It's not what Admech needs. Uh, I'm not a terrible gun, though. But I, I could see them going down another 20 points, and that would mm -hmm. be quite effective. Um, the Flyers, yeah, whatever. I, I everything, else like is is a... everything else is pretty reasonably costed, in my mind, right now, with the MFM. Uh, it's just the some of the anti-tank platforms aren't consistent enough to justify their cost and they need significant drop. If Call was just cheaper and you could get the reroll one's aura for not a insane amount, it would help this army in such a dramatic way and it would feel so much better to play because it would add that consistency. But he's just way too expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so that's honestly the first thing I would fix before robots is just make Call like 100 points. Mm -hmm. And then you run Call, you get the reroll ones, and the army feels already just a lot better. No, I completely agree. Yep. Yeah. But... Luckily, the internal balance of the book isn't significantly off. Mm -hmm. So in the whenever they do the balance update in January, 
hopefully that'll give them enough time to see Admex win rate doesn't dramatically jump with this book. It'll probably stay roughly around the same because it's not a huge boost in power level. It's still the same play style. You have more tools, but they're, especially in the Hunter cohort, they're tools that like really good players will take advantage of, like the people who just play Admech and get a lot of reps with them. Mm -hmm. But it's not as much of a, I can just show up with Admech and perform Table well you, with this yeah. army. It's just not going to happen. Um, is is my opinion on it. Totally would be love to prove wrong because I want Admech to do super well. Yeah. But um, luckily the internal balance isn't so off and I don't expect the MFM to be um, very different from the existing one. So I expect this to be pretty accurate. But like I said, if there are things that get huge drops, like if Call does get a huge drop, I'll come back in and uh, revisit this. Oh, interesting to see what happens there. How do you feel? I feel really good about this. Um, I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how Internally balanced with Codex feels. And there's not as many stinkers as you there's would really There's really just call them the robots. Like, we even said that the Breachers, the Rust Dockers, and the Tank are, like, probably a little bit of a cost, but they're not bad, right? They're, they really need just a consistency tool buff. Yeah. And call being super cheap would help with that. Yeah. And it would elevate them. Or they sure. could make call a full year to hit Aura. And keeping that at that price? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would pay 180 points for that. I, if four four reels, hit, if yeah, it was four reels already. dead, I would totally pay that. Yeah. No problem. Because then you can start looking at destroyers and the tanks really reliably. Yeah, the good. whole army becomes reliable, and that yeah. is that would be enough, I think, yeah. in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I think they would just sit around 50% yeah. with that type yeah. of buff. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we All don't right. write the rules. Uh, we just talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hope everybody enjoyed this one. Let me just make sure I didn't miss any other super chats. If you go to fan funding, you can uh, miss it. Yes. If you have any other questions for us, uh, yeah, it looks like we answered all mm -hmm. those. So if you do have any other questions for us, please uh, let us know in the comments below. Let us know what you think of the rankings. What are you having uh, success with with Admic? What are you most excited for? Mm -hmm. Which are the detachments? And uh, please tell your friends about us. We're going to be doing the Necron tier list next week. Yep. And this Friday, for your Admic fans, I am going to be building a list on stream. Um, I don't know which detachment I'm going to build. It might be the cohort one. Uh, I might just get a, uh, mm. you know, play the new cohort because with build list every Friday, we design a list from scratch and then play it the following week. So I'm trying to go through all the different Admech detachments and Rad the Radcore did get a huge boost. So uh, I think I will probably design the list for that one uh, on Friday. And then Wednesday, this Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time on our YouTube channel, there's the live stream game. That's going to be Admech, the Datasom Conclave up against um, the Necron Canoptic Court which is uh, probably the strongest Necron build. I think so. So yeah. should be a very exciting one. Please come and join us for those. And uh, we really appreciate everybody's support and hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, like I said, we'll see you in the comments. And uh, thank you so much. If you want additional Admech content, plenty more is coming, including a lot more games, uh, which we're going to be recording. So if you want more of that, theworm.vhx.tv. Uh, there's a three-day free trial, and uh, that includes all the different awesome videos, the Jack Theory videos, the Masterclass series, uh, the three um, battle reports we do every week. Um, all of that is included in our Warham subscription. You could get it on YouTube on the gold, um, but if you want a free trial to kind of test it out, check out our own platform, thewarham.bhx.tv. All right. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much, everybody. Really appreciate your support, and we will see you all uh, very soon for plenty more content. Hopefully tomorrow and Friday, all the AdMech fans will be back out hanging out with us. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.